hello everyone in this video we are going to learn how to install and start working with Python and start working with Python so think about Python and the code you want to write as the language it's a language programming language and you want to write it somewhere where can you write this think about it compared to for example English language or Spanish or Arabic languages you can write it anywhere you can write it in a notebook you can write it on a whiteboard on your computer the same for the programming languages including Python you can write it on your on, on an environment for example like PyCharm there is another environment like Anaconda and both of these the first two they need they require installation they require installation I will show you one of them maybe we can take Anaconda or PyCharm or both of them how to install it and there are other tools like Colab by Google which doesn't require installation where you can write and start coding and start writing your Python program without requiring any coding so let's go ahead and start with the first one install we have two steps installing python from python.org then install pycharm okay let me go to a new tab on google i will type here python.org click enter then you have this screen depending when you are watching this video the screen might be different the website might be a little bit a little bit different but you will be able to find a button that says downloads downloads now i'm using i am using windows so i will hit on this button python 3.11.1 if you have mac os you click on mac os but for me i'm using windows so i will go ahead with python 3.11 3.3.11.1 now this is the version 3.11.1 this is the version of python there are previous versions and possibly or most prob probably there will be future versions so if you are watching this video sometime in the future that this version might be 3.12 or 3.11.5 or something so don't worry it's all all of them are the same some updates here and there but don't install something old like 3. Point, let's say 8 or 3.7 some features might not be working so 3.11 is perfect i will hit enter and the installation will start the installer you can see it on the bottom left side or corner of your screen i'll hit enter one click left click on this then it will ask me install python 3.11.164 bit yes this is what you want 64 bit okay select install now to install python with default settings or choose customize to enable or disable some features let's say click on this and see what does it have you have documentation okay no problem these are some documentation files giving you some uh, help and uh, maybe learning documents pip install pip which can download and install other python packages yes we require this uh, idle install this uh, development environment yes we need the development environment where we write our code python test suite no problem keep everything the same click next then advanced options don't change anything just keep the path the same and click install installation restart do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device no problem click yes we trust it we know this website it will start installing it might take a few seconds or a few minutes depending on the speed of your connection let's wait for it so as i said this is one way the first step is to install the python the python from python.org also there is another step which we need to which we need to install which is pycharm okay pycharm let's wait a few seconds okay perfect installation has been finished now setup was successful click close and that's it perfect this is the first installation second one i will go sorry i will just go to a new tab and here pycharm i will type pycharm download pycharm download it's from a company jetbrains.com click on the first one download pycharm python ide or id for professional click on it and once you click you have two options you have this website jetbrains.com pycharm download you have two options professional or community professional is for more advanced more features it's paid not free paid one you don't need this one at the beginning we will go with the community it's a free of course and also includes everything you require as 
starting point for Python. I will click download and it will install the PyCharm again on the lower left side. It will take a few minutes. So this is the PyCharm is the environment where we are going to write our code. Okay, this is your notebook. Let's say this is your whiteboard where you will write your code. The code you can write it anywhere. Even the code you can write it on a paper, right? Or you can write it on a notepad or a Word file. But it has limited application or it has limited features because you will not be able to debug or to see if there is error. Once you install the environment like PyCharm, it will give you the ability to understand if there are errors, there are some documentations for help, there are some functionalities, it gives you hints and so on. So that's why you are installing the environment. Let's take a few seconds, wait for it. Great, installation has been finished. I will click on it, lower left side. Now it's starting in a few seconds. It will open a new window or a new box. And it will ask, do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? No problem, yes. Click yes. Welcome to PyCharm Community Edition Setup. Click next. Keep the path as it is, don't change it. Next. The only thing you can click here is create desktop shortcut. This is the only thing. The other things keep it as it is next install now it will take a few minutes again to install pycharm community edition to your laptop let's take a few seconds or a few minutes and we'll come back after perfect installation has been finished now completing pycharm community edition setup it says pycharm community edition has been installed on your computer click finish to close setup and you have the option to run PyCharm Community Edition. We can do that or we just click finish. And now we successfully installed Python from python.org and installed PyCharm. How can I start coding then? How can I open PyCharm? Simple, go to your start menu and click or search for PyCharm, PyCharm. You have PyCharm Community Edition. PyCharm Community Edition, simply click on it and you will have a new box or a new window that is going to open in a few seconds. Okay, let's give it a few seconds to open PyCharm Community 2022.3 from JetBrains. Let's wait for it a few seconds. And loading Python project, search everywhere. This is just some hints what you can do with it. Okay. Now I have project and I have my window and I can start working immediately. For example, I can create, so this is, if you come on that first one, so this is the window here on the black side. This is the main things where the main work will happen. This is on the left is just for the files and folders and other things, but we don't need it usually. I can just click one click to hide it or click open it again. I can create a new project, right click on Python project and it will open a new, a new file. You can click on new file or Python file. We need Python file. You can click file then assign it as Python file or simply just Python file. I click Python file, give it a name. I will call it test to click enter. And this is my test two, you see here, test two. I can simply one plus one. Then to run it, I go to this arrow on the top right, right? Run test two. And it gives you here, no Python at C program. Okay, whatever, there is error or whatever it is, but it is working. So I have now my, I have my Python PyCharm and it's a read, it is ready to work. So this is not working because what I can do, I can make it work. For example, if I want to test it, I will remove this one. Print, open, let's say, hello. This is very famous. Hello, world, hello world, and then run it. And what will happen is, it gives some errors we will look at this error later we will learn how to fix it and debug some errors but for now all i need is just to make sure it is working it is working for example if i open another file here i can write one plus one and go ahead press run
okay great so now we installed python files and python charm where we can start writing don't worry about the errors don't worry about anything else just we in this step we learned how to install python and python charm okay if you have any difficulties with this step just leave a comment or message me and we'll be happy to help you to install it and make sure it is working now this is one way another way i recommend and i like it is to go which is the third point work with an online tool without installation without an installation so the first step python and python charm we installed some files now if you don't want to install you just want to work online tools collab by google is a perfect choice so what you do you go and you tap open google and just type collab collab click enter and it will give you collab.research.google.com type this or just click on the first one click enter or click on it and it will open the screen for me because I have it already it will show me if you don't have it I assume you don't have it you will sign up easily by entering your Google account you need Google account Google Gmail you need Gmail and email by Google you need a Gmail to sign up and very easy how to do that i will show you so let me open incognito window don't worry about this one this is just a browser that doesn't store my history so because i have already collapsed so whenever i open from a normal window it will open my previous windows right collapse so i cannot sign up but if i open from incognito it will allow me hopefully to sign up so collab dot research dot google dot com okay collab dot research dot google dot com i need to sign in or sign up for this you will have this window you go to file new notebook and google sign in required so i need to sign in simply your enter your email your password for gmail you need a gmail your email and your password and then you are good to go okay that's it very easy to sign up for collab much easier than the other ones now after you sign up you will have a new window you will have collab.research.google.com and you have a new notebook it's called new notebook notebook because you write on it right you are writing the code it's a language same like writing english or writing anything on your notebook and you will have this window if you notice it's similar to the window where i write your comments i wrote my comments where I write where I wrote my comments so work with online tools without installation co collab by Google and let's see if I want a new code here one plus one and then click on the arrow it will run this code and the result will be two right we can use Python as a calculator but this is not the main purpose of Python just for demonstration so give it a few seconds because the first time to run a code on this notebook it will take a few seconds to set up and the answer as you can see here too if I want a new code click new code and here I'll write for example print open brackets don't worry about what is the print all this I just want to test hello world make sure it's working then go and press on the arrow and everything will be there hello world so i told python print me this sentence between the brackets right print hello world hello world is between the brackets and i put the double quotation don't worry about this again we are going to learn all these ones now in this first lecture we are learning how to install how to start using python how to start coding so this is the second one so we learned how to install python from python.org and pycharm these two we need them together if you choose the first point installation of python.org and pycharm we need both together to start working using pycharm that's the black screen the first step then i jump to the third one to use the collab which is very easy no installation required now let me show you quickly how to install anaconda anaconda is another environment very famous commonly used and simply you go to google type anaconda download then anaconda.com products distribution just to press or click on anaconda distribution and then you will have the screen you can download from here or you can just go to the bottom of the screen it might change with time so just search for windows or mac os or linux depending on your operating system and choose 64-bit okay 
because the newer ones 64 there might be 32 but you choose 64 now it will start installing on the bottom left corner just give it a few minutes depending on your network and we'll come back after it finished installation okay here we are now we have the installation just to click on it and in a few seconds it will open a new dialog box where it will guide us to install our environment the installation is straightforward you just go to the website of any of the environments PyCharm, Anaconda just follow the instructions and it will take you to the installation and it will prompt you to install correctly okay just it's installing please wait verifying installer 40 percent a few seconds so which one to choose out of these all of them are good if you don't want to install anything call up quick and easy and within one minute you can start coding anaconda is recommended very good one so let's go next i agree no problem just me or all users no just me next don't change the path next directory is not empty please choose different location okay because i had it already let's say browse and i'll change to okay anaconda cancel and i will change for example let me try another one next okay add and advanced option for you let me go back for you you change nothing here anaconda 3 keep it as it is for me because i had it before so that was not empty folder so i just changed it to 2 but for you don't change anything i'll click next here advanced options even if it says add anaconda 3 to my path not recommended no click on it no problem don't worry about it just click it will help you with the documentation with the files and then click install it will take a few seconds or a couple of minutes let's see while installing so what i was saying is any of these tools or any of these environments collab pycharm anaconda i keep repeating this one but it's very important to understand that there is no difference more or less all of them gives you the same options the difference between pycharm anaconda from one side and from the other side collab is collab has no installation immediately you can work on it just sign up with your gmail account pycharm and anaconda you need to install some files into your computer right into your computer so there are some advantages and disadvantages for each one it doesn't matter as a starter which one you will work on let's have, wait a few seconds and we will come back after the installation finishes okay it's still installing almost finished this is the anaconda environment meanwhile let me show you a few things on the collab okay so one thing you can do you can use it as a calculator and this is uh, for python one plus one equals two you just hit the enter the, the arrow here which is control plus enter if you want or print words and the print in python doesn't mean that you're printing a paper it means that type on the screen type on the screen okay if i want a new code either i press control or code sorry press code and here i can for example say a equals two then enter b equals three and then i will say okay python find me a plus b and then i will hit run the code the arrow means run the code okay run the code there are different ways to run the code one is from here the arrow or i can just control in your keyboard control plus enter control enter and what will happen it will give me the answer a plus b 2 plus 3 equals 5 let me see the installation almost finished okay installed all the files everything is okay now finished installation complete setup was complete successfully click next let me show you a few things keep next I don't want the tutorial I don't want the um, help files just finish and click those click finish now it will start it will open just give it a few seconds so remember I keep repeating this one very important we have different options maybe three of the common ones one is anaconda pycharm and also you have the online without installation which is the collab now if i go to my start and search for anaconda let me see anaconda 
sorry anaconda it will have anaconda prompt anaconda i don't want the prompt anaconda still installing anaconda navigator you need to find anaco anaconda navigator anaconda navigator okay let's let me see if i click on it anaconda navigator it will open for you the prompt so yes it's there another thing i want to see it's still installing it takes some time huh? it's uh, because it's big files so it takes some time this is the by charm let me just close it exit okay more a few more seconds for anaconda to install finish installing i need the anaconda navigator but not the app not the app okay and anaconda by the way is not only for is not only for python it's also for other programming languages okay let me let me come back in a few minutes or a few seconds when the installation finishes okay here now perfect anaconda finished installation so i go my startup I search for anaconda navigator click on anaconda navigator then this window will open for you anaconda navigator under anaconda navigator there are many applications i need to go to the home tab and go to Jup jupyter notebook jupyter notebook and click on launch it will take again a few seconds it's a straightforward forward process but the installation takes time so be patient with it and I will wait for Jupyter to uninstall and once you install Jupyter as you can see there are many applications even there's Java, JavaScript, Oracle there are even PyCharm you can install from here there are different things so once Jupyter installed I will not wait for it too long once Jupyter installed then you have your environment ready to start working with Anaconda Navigator or the Python using Anaconda environment okay so this is the third way we are using now for this course i will be using mainly i will be using mainly the collab okay i'll be using mainly the collab because it has everything and it's enough to work with python so that was the first lecture for installation of python and start working with it choose the right one for you choose the anyone you would like the easiest as i said is the collab so thank you very much and i will see you soon in the next video Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to learn how to run Python codes and how to use the Colab. Now, here I am on my Colab, where I can use Python and write Python codes without installation. Okay, without installing any software. So, I have this file untitled 10. I can change the name. I can say it, for example, running Python code. And you see the extension. The type is IPYNB. Okay python and here in this lecture we are going to run python codes so the first thing is to create a new cell or a new code and here is the plus sign click on it and you have a new cell and a new python code so here the first thing simple we saw it for example i want to write one plus one on my keyboard i can run this code i can execute this code by simply pressing the enter or pressing this arrow now it's running it will take a few seconds because it is the first time to run a code in this notebook okay and the answer is two now if i want a new one i can go a new code and here for example i want to print and as we learned the print doesn't mean that you are going to print something it means that you are telling python to type what you want on the screen and whenever you want to print if you want to print a text you need to put it between double quotation double quotation and here we can write hello world hello world then what you can say you can go to this arrow and click on it or another way is control enter in your keyboard you press control and enter at the same time hello world and it will print hello world see here it prints whatever between the double quotation it prints whatever between the double quotation if i change this one you can edit here if i say test for example run it again and it will change to test okay 
whatever between double quotation will be printed in Python as it is as it is if I say plus for example here if I say 1 plus 1 the output here will not be 2 it will be 1 plus 1 between because it is between double quotation and Python will treat it as a string or as it will type it it will print it as it is 1 plus 1 the output will be 1 plus 1 okay if you want the answer you if you want the calculation you say 1 plus 1 just simple as simple as that okay what happens if we remove the double quotation here and run the code the answer will be 2 so we are telling Python here treat this inside I want the answer of 1 plus 1 which is 2 so it's the same as 1 plus 1 or print 1 plus 1 it is the same what happens now if I have a new code double quotation without a print and I write hello world for example and I hit enter and it will print hello world okay with the quotations with the quotations now if I double quotation or one quotation let's go at the end we're going to see everything about this don't worry about it just we are exploring to see what we can enter here Python printed hello world okay see so the difference if you put print it will give you without the quotations or oh, without the quotations hello world okay perfect what else we can do we can for example store data for example I can say Python a equal to B equals 5 now find me a plus B and the answer as we expect should be 7 excellent I can also do another thing I can say Python C equals a plus B and see here what will happen okay I didn't ask Python to print anything I just told Python C is a new variable which equals a plus B now if I come down and say C okay print for me C or what is the result of C C is 7 because C equals a plus B a equal 2 B plus five, plus B which is 5 so 2 plus 5 that's 7 okay so I'm telling Python print me print for me C or type on the screen for me C which is a plus B which equals 2 plus 5 which is 7 now this is the same if I tell Python print C let's see what happens the answer is 7 okay because Python remembers that C equal a plus B which is 7 now what happens if I change one of them imagine a now equals 5 or let's say equals 4 so I just a plus B 9 if I run this one again it's 9 and if I run one this one it's 9 so it changes okay Python remembers and changes automatically okay great these are a few things and how we can run a code in Python a few things here so we learned the code if you want to enter a new code you can do this one also by by, by the way we said control enter it will execute right it will run the code you can also do shift enter shift plus enter and it will run the code at the same time will generate a new cell will open a new cell for you to write a new code here uh, we have the file edit view insert runtime tools help there are many things here we will explore many of them not everything but many of these things we'll see what they include and how can we benefit from them also here you have the storage usually for our exercises we don't need a lot of storage until very advanced level if you are working with big data sets with big programs that's different story but for now we don't need this okay perfect keep going and I will see you in the next video hello everyone in this video we are going to learn a little bit more about the data types data types in Python data types in Python so I wrote here I am here now on my collab Google Colab as we learned how to open it we open Colab and then I have one cell I put my comments just what to remember what I'm going to teach in this video and here I want you the first thing to note everything in Python if you start with a hashtag it means this is a comment this is a note so Python once he sees a dash 
he immediately say okay this is not part of the code this is not part of the code I will not execute it see if I do this one if I remove the dash or let me first with the dash let me run the code what will happen nothing code will not be there is nothing to execute because all my lines are notes are comments right there will be no error there will be no results nothing will be out of this cell let's wait a few seconds and the result is there is nothing right which is normal now see what happens if I remove the dash and I tell Python okay let's run this code and there will be an error the error is indicated by a red line and also here uh, there is the error so I will tell Python this is not for execution this is not for running don't run this code so hashtag I will add just a hashtag and everything will be okay so data type this is overview of the data types the first one is called integers and these are whole numbers such as three five hundred seven for example this is an integer okay this is an integer three how do we know the type of of the number or of the data type how do I know the data type simply you can write type sorry I need to change the language type then open brackets then put three for example run this code and the answer is int int is the short for integers okay we're going to learn a little bit more about the types and how to find the type of the data so the first one was integers these are whole numbers like 3 517 and so on floating points these are numbers with decimal point like 3.2 200.0 5.9 and so on strings these are order these are ordered sequence of characters ordered sequence of characters same like hello 200 or this Arabic text marhaba so and all of them are between double bracket double quotation or single quotation double quotation or single quotation so 200 here this is a number but because it's between because it's between the double quotation this is called a string it's not a whole number it's not integer in this case okay and if you want to double check I can create a cell here and I say okay type let's start with 200 first and then run this code run this code it's integer now if I change it by adding double quotation double quotation here and here and run the code the type will be str which is the short for strings okay perfect then I have lists ordered sequence of objects and they are between this square brackets 100 hello 200.3 anything can between in the list it can include anything integers floating points strings anything then I have dictionaries unordered it's unordered sequence and it includes two parts the first part it's the key then the value okay so I have a key then I have a value and here sorry there are colon not comma okay so I have key then value for example name and colon then sum name colon sum then I, we are going to talk a lot more about each and every one of these we are going to see them a lot so don't worry this is just an overview then tuples or tuples ordered immutable sequence of objects immutable means they cannot be changed any item any item in the tuple cannot be changed okay we are going to talk about it more and there is brackets here okay 100 hello 100.5 it can include anything but again they cannot be changed sets an ordered collection of unique objects and they have this what they call this one like um, um, what they call this one is like curly braces curly curved yeah curved curved uh, braces maybe and it can include objects a b we are going to talk about it more then we have booleans and the booleans are logical values indicating either true or false so for example five larger than two this is a true so this is boolean we are going to talk about it more okay so we learned here a few things number one to summary to summarize you have the hashtag at the beginning this makes it a comment or a note and Python will not run this code will not run it as a code number two we learned data 
types one two three four five six seven eight of them then we also learned how to find the type of the data okay and that's simply by adding type then brackets sorry i need to change the language type then open brackets then write whatever you want inside right you can write 5.6 for example run the code and the result is float floating point right float because there is a decimal point perfect thank you very much and i will see you in the next video hello everyone in this video we are going to learn more about the numbers in python and how can we use python as a calculator so let me open a new code and here the first thing we need to learn about plus minus multiplication and division so we can use it as we saw as a normal simple calculator so one plus one and run this code equals two also if i want to just say five minus two run the code so i have sum i have subtraction then also i can do multiplication six and i use the asterisk sign times three run the code and i have 18 also i can use it as a division so a nine let's say divide by three divide over three and the answer is a three so i can use it this way also i can use it for something called mod or module as module okay module and what does it mean what does this mean it's useful thing and let me put here a comment a dash just to make it as a comment now for example if i say 10 divide 10 over 2 the answer is 5 right 10 over 2 the answer is 5 so I just need to sorry let me just remove the comments just to be as a normal code 10 over 2 run the code and the answer is 5 right now see what happens if I enter let's say 10 over 3 what is the answer here we know it's 3 point something 3.3 then a few times what about let's say 15 divide by 4 that's a 3.75 3.75 because there are three fourths and the remaining is a three right so now see what happens if I change the normal division let me just put the cursor here and say a new code and I have a new cell here if I say 15 and this time not the forward slash I will say the per percentage sign and this sign is the mod or module sign what does it do let's see the result first then we discover together what does it mean three here so what happens here python will say okay how many fours are there in 15 how many fours are there in 15 there are three fours and there is a remaining the remainder is how much is a three correct is a three okay let me change the number let's see another example and make it clearer let's say 17 over 17 and then percentage sign 4 and here what do we expect how many fours are there in 17 there are four fours because 4 times 4 is 16 and there is a remainder 1 correct so the answer here should be 1 because the percentage sign or the mod calculation tells me what is the remainder after the division operation and the answer is one okay so this is useful because you can check with this one what is your remainder how much is remain reminding how much is the remainder after you finish your division operation also this is useful because you can find it find with it you can find if a number is even or odd if the number is even or odd how can we do that we know if the number is even when you divide it by two the remainder should be how much should be zero for example if i say 10 divide by let's say two correct so this the answer is five right and how much is the remainder the remainder is zero because we can double check here 10 and percentage sign two the answer should be zero here because there are five twos in the 10 and there is nothing remain re, the, nothing nothing left correct nothing left after the division
so we know that 10 is 10 is what 10 is an even number what about let's say 15 15 mod 2 always divide by 2 because all even numbers are dividing by 2 with a zero remainder let me run this code and the answer is 1 because there are 7 twos and the remainder is 1 so 15 is odd number 15 is odd number let's see okay so 15 is an odd number this is useful because often in your program you need to find if a variable if a number is even or odd and then you can do this you can use the mod okay we are going to see that in a prog in a program in an actual program one more thing we can use also python as equation to to perform calculations and more complex calculations and some equations for example if i want to say and operation orders respecting the operation orders what do i mean if i say for example 2 plus 10 times 5 plus 3 so the answer here should be 55 correct 10 times 5 because the we are respecting the calculations so uh, order 10 times 5 that's 50 plus 2 plus 3 that's 55 55 now if I change this one if I say no I want 2 plus 10 first then 5 times a 3 so I need to put it between brackets 2 plus 10 close the brackets then I will say times 5 plus 3 and now the answer will be different 12 times 8 which is 96 okay so I can also do that with Python so whatever you can do in a calculator Python can do and even more complex things so these are a few things we have seen the operations calculations plus minus multiplication division then we saw the mod or module which is using the percentage sign and this gives you the remainder to check for remainders okay and to check is useful to check for even numbers the power uh, we didn't see the power let's see the power so how do you use the power so if I want 2 to the power of 3 and I enter it by double asterisk enter the answer should be 8 okay another one let's say 3 to the power 4 and the answer is 81 okay so the power by using double asterisk then the order of operations as we have seen in the equation here okay that's it for the numbers we are going to see more numbers and more about the numbers and we are going to use it in programs and larger code and it will be also with more examples so you can have everything clear thank you very much and i will see you in the next video hello everyone in this video we are going to do some exercises i will present the questions in this video then take your time and the next video we will do the solutions together so let me go over the questions for you and then take your time try them answer the questions then in the next video come back and see the answers so the first question write an ex expression that equals 100 for example 50 plus 50 or 2 times 30 plus 4 times 10 2 times 30 60 plus 4 times 10 that's 40 which is 100 try to use more than one arithmetic operator like this example 2 times 30 this is 1 plus 2 4 times 10 3 make it more complex try to play around it there are infinite number of solutions okay so there is not only one correct answer you can answer this question by using many different combinations Question number two, what is the result of 1 plus 3 times 2 minus 5? It should be easy question and just make sure to respect the operator's order. Question number three, which of the following will give the result of 25? Option number one, 5 times 5, 5 to the power 5, 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 easy question try all of them and see what is the result in Python also question number four which of the following I misspelled following which of the following is a floating point number 500 9645 200.0 hello dot world okay if you want to check 
if you want to check the type of any data simply I will give you a hint it's just type type then between the brackets and write your data for example 500 and if I run the cell it will give me integer right 500 is integer so you can check this one or go back to the definition of floating point number and see what it should have okay perfect see you in the next video where we will go go over the questions and answer them thank you hello everyone again okay in this video we are going to go over the training the practice exercise and see the solutions so question number one says write an expression that equals 100 okay and give some examples and here what we can do there are different answers you can have many answers not only one answer so I can write for example 100 plus 0 and this is accurate right let me run this one control plus enter and the answer is 0 is 100 also I can say 99 plus 1 control enter the answer is 100 also I can make it a little bit longer I can say 1 plus 55 plus this is 56 I can plus 4 this is 60 plus 40 and then control enter that's 100 so there are many ways to make this correct also I can make 10 to the power 2 control enter and the answer again is 100 I can add floats floating points to the power 2 is the same should be right 100 okay perfect so there are many answers for this one whatever you wrote is correct if the answer is 100 question number two says what is the result of 1 plus 3 times 2 minus 5 we can do this manual and then check it with Python so 1 plus 3 times 2 minus 5 remember there is priority the priority the order first to the multiplication so 3 times 2 that's 6 plus 1 that's 7 minus 5 is 2 right the answer is 2 let me check I'll copy this one Control C Control V to paste it Control enter to run and the answer is 2 don't do the mistake which is 1 plus 3 that's 4 times 2 that's 8 minus 5 3 no this is not correct you need to start with the multiplication question number 3 says which of the following will give the result of 25 okay let's check them 5 times 5 that's 25 correct 5 to the power 5 no this is much more than 5 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 that's 20 let's check them one by one here I can say 5 times 5 let me run it the answer is 25 then if I say to the power double asterisk this is the answer 3 1 2 5 and then if I say plus of course this is manually easy but just to demonstrate how it works in Python and the answer here is 20 as we expect and the last question which of the following is a floating point number 500 9645 200 point zero hello dot word so we know the floating point number has a decimal right has a decimal so we know number three is correct number one no number number one is integer number two is integer number three is a floating point number four is a string don't be confused with the dot here this is not a decimal this is just inside a string so what we can do here we can check it how we check the type of a data in python we simply enter type then i put my data which is here 500 control this is integer if i change 9645 9645 this is integer also 200.0 see the difference here this is str a float this is a float right floating point and hello world i can just copy this one all of it Control C, put it inside the type. Control Enter. That's a string, right? A string. Okay, perfect. So these are a few things just to make sure we understand and practice a little bit about the data types in Python. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Hello, everyone. In this video, we are going to learn about the variables assignment. So we have a few points starting variables assignment. We'll see how to do that. How to check the type of the variable using the type function within Python and how to 
also a few things a few rules about the variables variables cannot start with a number there can be no spaces in the name of the variable instead we use the underscore and it's considered the best practice to use lowercase for the variable names it's not a must but it's a good practice and in the future we are going to learn when we can or when it's good practice to use uppercase for variables and the last point avoid using words that have special meaning in python like list or int list this is a special word or a special variable in python already reserved in python for a list and int reserved for integer right okay let's learn more about these points with some examples let me add a new code a new cell variables assignment let me take first variable for example i will say my variable is x and i will say equals 10 x equals 10 now if i type x and run the code it gives me the value 10 gives me the value 10 i also can reassign this let me open a new cell i if i print x again x is 10 but now i will say x equals 5 if okay x equals 5 then i print x again and the answer is 5 so this is i assigned x to 10 but then i changed my mind and said no x is not 10 x is 5 so this is called reassignment of the variables okay reassignment so you can do that in python it's totally okay so now x equals 5 now let me add a new variable called y y equals let's say equals 3 and run the code now if i check x is 5 and y is 3 now if i want to check x plus y see what we can do here x plus y 5 plus 3 equals 8 also i can do variables operations i can do operations on the variables themselves instead of writing 5 plus 3 equals 8 i can give it more meaning right x plus y x can be anything and in this case i assign it to 5 but maybe later it can be something else and y equals a 3 in this case 5 plus 3 equals 8 also if i change i can do all the operators i can perform all the operations x times y should be 15 also i can to the power 5 to power 3 125 and so on okay i also we learned the division 1.6 also we learned the mod the mod what should be the answer here 5 mod 3 control enter and the answer is 2 because this is the remainder right and so on okay excellent now let me remove this now what if i say okay z equals x plus y this is an equation z equals x plus y and now i want z it's 8 okay instead of typing x plus y i can just refer to z z equals 8 okay let's see real life example or more meaningful example now i can say monthly salary monthly salary or let me change it because this is already used before so i can say the salary or salary just salary salary equals let's say seven okay salary equals seven now if i check what is salary control enter it's seven okay seven now what if i say yearly yearly salary or so i used it before so just let me use the fresh things so salary equals seven now imagine the salary changed by 20 percent increased 20 percent so i can say salary equals seven times 1.2 right which is 20 percent extra run this code nothing will be shown always if you want to show something on the screen you want the output you need to type you need to type the name and just control enter now 8.4 because 7 times 1.2 this is 8.4 so this is the assignment and reassignment of the variables point number one number two how to check the type of the variable this is easy we saw it before now if i can if i can if i come here and i say type of x what do you think type of x it is integer right because just a number what about type of z type of z should be also integer right what about type of salary 
control enter sorry i mistype it's a float right because 8.4 that's what that's a float it has a decimal it's a float Montas. this is the type second point variable cannot start with a number let's check that out a new cell if i say 5 test okay equals 10 then control enter run this code or just see there's an error the file line number one there's error and there's a red line below where is the error is five test equals 10 and says invalid syntax invalid syntax it means there is something wrong with your input and because we have five here that's the mistake so test equals 10 now it's okay i can type it on the screen and it gives me 10 so don't start a variable with a number there can be no spaces in the name in the name of the variable use underscore instead so let's see an example a new cell let's say for example um, monthly income equals 100 if I run this there is a syntax error also invalid syntax because there is a space how do we solve it how do we solve this one just remove the space replace it with underscore now run it there is no error everything is okay and then if I want to type it on the screen monthly and you see here all the variables that assigned with starting with monthly it will appear here so you can select and control enter and the answer is 100 monthly income monthly income perfect so don't keep spaces in the variables name it is considered a best practice to use lowercase for the variables names yes better always start with use only lower cases use only lower cases upper cases can be used there there be no error however let's see it for example i can say salary control enter says is not defined because i didn't give any so the salary let's say 1000 now should be okay see there is no error there is no error however it's not good practice it's not a good practice use only small letters lower case okay lower case then avoid using words that have special meaning in python like list or integer for example here the word or is the word or is reserved in python as a special word okay as a special word so you cannot use it as a variable if i use it here what will happen gives me error okay because or python expects me to use the word or in a different way in a different way not as a variable how do we know it's reserved already because the color of the word is a special see the same for and is a special but if i use a word like int int also reserved if i use a word float also reserved if i use test no problem is the black is not reserved so all good okay so make sure you don't use the words that are reserved how do you know the reserved words you don't need to remember you don't need to memorize them python will tell you by having a special color okay perfect this is a lot don't worry about these things much we are going to see them again and again just to play around a little bit do some uh, practice and i will see you in the next video thank you very much hello everyone in this video we are going to learn more about the strings we saw different types of data in python float integer strings list dictionary and so on and now we are going to explore more about the strings so a few things we are going to learn one is how to define how to how to tell python that this input is a string we are using double quote or single quote then we have a sp we are going to see examples of course then we have special case what if what if my string has a quote inside what can we do then what what about this one backward n backward t then the len function and indexing okay let's go ahead and see examples and learn more about the strings so first of all a string can be defined by double quote like hello world okay and it takes a few seconds because this is a new notebook so i put here double quote i can do the same with a single quote let me just wait a few seconds till it work and give me 
that there is no error everything is okay just to finish only the first time you run your notebook it takes a little bit time but then everything okay so here it gave me the output hello world with with the quote right then if I put with a single quote is the same hello world and run the code this is faster and it prints the last one only prints the last one or types the last one which is hello world okay now what if I want both of them hello world the first one and the second one I can just add the print function right print with parentheses and here print print and parentheses again and now if I run the code what will happen both of them will come out okay without the quote without the quotations without the quotation so if you want to run all your input then or type all your inputs then you need to add print add print now what about the special case what if my string already has like uh, a quote I don't like see I start here with a single quote and I don't like this for example and I close it here now I think okay I put a quote at the beginning quote at the at the end this is a string control enter run the code and there is error invalid syntax where is the error because Python thinks okay this is your first quote this is your second quote so Python thinks this is your string however how do how can we tell Python no finish here at the end simply by changing to double quotation okay double quotation if you have if you have if you have the quote or the comma this one single quote in between the string make sure to use double quote quotation at the beginning and at the end so if I run this now it should be okay I don't like this okay see and everything okay of course I can type the function print it will be the same but without the quotations outside perfect this is important thing the same if I say for example I am I am going out I'm going out control enter there is a wrong there is a mistake here there's an error because Python again thinks that this is a beginning of a string so we need to make sure that we add my quotations okay control enter all good now all good perfect so we saw hello world we how to enter it, double quotation single single quotation what happens in the special case if I have a quote inside then control uh, backward sorry backward slash with n what does it do backward slash with n let me take for example this one let me take a new cell and I say here this is my string hello world if I print this one we know the result it's hello world what if I add here backward n what will happen control n there will be an what will happen here if I add print with parentheses and now print and see what happens it gives you a new line gives you a new line backwards sla backwards slash with n gives you a new line so python will say okay i will print hello then a space which is this one there is a space at the end then i will go to the next line space again which is here you see at the space at the beginning then the word world now if i want to remove the space i just simply do this one and python will go to the second line immediately and understands that this n is not a letter this is just to go to the next line the same I can do with print then double quotation hello world and this one will give me hello world but if I put here backwards slash with a T see what will happen the effect of this one it gives you a space let me just change this one to a comment I don't want to print it again so hello world there is like a tab between right tab between okay perfect these are a few things about the strings what else also there is a function a function called len len is a short for length so I can see the length of my string if I say the length of hello world and here we forgot to put what the quotations for my string otherwise there will be an error so the length is 11 how come 11 one each letter each character has 
one index so h is one two three four five the space also is counted six seven eight nine ten eleven let's make a shorter one len of let's say i am how many here should be i have the i then a space then a and m should be four exactly four okay four so the length is four the last thing i want to show you in this video is indexing each character in the string hello for example has has an index and in python the indexing starts with zero not with one so each index is zero okay so starts with zero then the e is one the l is two the second l three the o is four why this is important we are going to see this in the next video when we talk about about the slicing and how to add letters for example or add components to my strings okay for example i want to cut the letter e from the word hello i want to cut the letter e how can i tell python i want to tell python by removing the index removing the component number what number one okay because it's zero one we are going to see this in details in the next video so for now this is the introduction thank you very much and i'll see you in the next video welcome again everyone in this video we are going to learn about slicing and indexing with strings okay let's continue on top of the what we have learned before we learned before what is and what is a string how to enter a string the quotation how to use the backward slash with n and with t also we said each character in the string has an index let's take example for example if i say test string test string equals this this is a variable hello word okay if i run this okay now if i recall it test string and control enter it will give me hello world hello world so it's working everything is okay now a new cell if i say test string and then i want imagine that i want to grab the letter e the letter e from here now remember each letter in the string has an index has a number so and we start from zero so h is zero e is one l is two l is three O is four then the space is five and continue okay the space is five and we continue so if I want to grab the letter E I do an indexing by what by a square by the square square uh, brackets and now I tell Python which which letter I want the letter that has an index number zero one so if I pr type one here I run the code it should retain the letter e perfect it's working imagine that i want the letter o so zero one two three four so if i put four here run the code it should bring back o now what if i want the letter l here not the first two l's the last l here zero one two three four five six seven eight nine if i change this to nine it should give me l so what about d it should be 10 control run and d is 10 excellent now there is another way also to bring the the letters back uh, to to call to recall or to type out the letters so i can either forward indexing or the negative indexing negative indexing counting from the back so d starts with minus one l minus two r minus three and so on so let me say minus one minus one should come back as a d excellent what about minus three should be r control enter r so you have both options either you go forward zero one two three or you ga go backward minus one minus two minus three and so on imagine that we have another string name for example equals a b c d for example ef okay and then control enter name let's call it and gives me a b c d e f excellent now if i want to to call the f simply uh, square brackets 
and minus one instead of counting zero one two three four five um, minus one control enter and gives me the f okay and this is useful if you have a name for example or you have a string that you don't know how long it is but you want to grab the last letter then minus one or the letter before the last minus two and so on okay so this is for indexing okay now take a few seconds and i will give you exercise let's say i have string two this is a variable string two variable equals and my string is this is a test string okay control let me make sure no errors yes then if i string two control enter this is a test string perfect it's working now i would like you take a few seconds and give me this s type an input for python to retain this s in the word test i will give you a few seconds okay let's do it together so we said we need to grab the s so string underscore e a two then square brackets and now let's count zero one two three the space is four five six seven eight nine ten it's the eleventh one right eleventh so i'll write eleven hopefully it's correct and it is correct so 11 is my e now now let's uh, try something new what if i want to slice i don't want to pick one letter i want to retype everything from the letter for example s till the letter t so s till t so how can we do that we can do it like this string then two this is my this is my string name right this is the variable then the square brackets always then i'll start counting zero one two three from three then colon till where so zero one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen till thirteen let me show you first this thirteen what will happen 3 to 13 s is a test okay it removed the t why because python 13 says okay i'll stop at 13 but i will not include 13 so will not include the t so if you want the t to be included you need to add one more it will stop at the t so 14 and see here it works s is a test let's take other examples just to make the idea clear now let's make it simple test this is a test string and this is a test let's call it let's call it a test okay so test is a string the variable name is test okay now if i recall it control enter it gives me test yes then if i want to grab the letter s here it's zero one two perfect now if i want the letter s and the letter t so i want zero one two three see what will happen it gives me only s who knows why only s because we said start with two zero one two the s then three don't include we are telling python yes stop at three but don't include a three so it stops at s so if i want to include the t i need to increase one four st even if though even though there is no fourth letter zero one two three zero one two three there is no fourth letter but still you need to add one if you want to include the last letter okay okay perfect now another example if i want let's go back to this example string underscore two this is a test string if i want fl from the letter a till the end how can i do that i can say string let me add it in a new cell just to be clear so i can say string underscore two then square brackets and i want it from the letter where from from this t till all till the end till the end so i'll say zero one two three four space five six seven space eight nine from 10 from 10 now instead of writing till the end which is 11 12 13 and you count and you find the number of the last one i can simply put the colon 
and that's it so this is understood by python that start at 10 till the end control enter test string okay test string perfect and we can do the opposite imagine that i want string underscore two square brackets i want from the beginning till is okay till is so what can i do from the beginning so this is from the beginning before i didn't write anything so uh, python will understand that this is from the very beginning till zero one two three space four five six is the letter s is the sixth index so i need to add one to include the letter s seven let's see this is perfect okay perfect so play with it very important to understand it let me give you an exercise so let's say my string my string equals hello world okay control enter it's working no errors if i print it if i type here string gives me hello world as output now i would like you to give me the section this one the two l's o till o from l till o take a few seconds and think how can you write your instruction to python to print only these letters i'll give you a few seconds and then continue together okay perfect let's see how we do that my strength square brackets then hello world we said from l till o right l till o so i have zero one two three four five six seven and i add one eight so two to eight two colon eight control enter and gives me ll space w o okay let's see another example or another thing the last thing i would like to show you in this video my string let this let's use this example hello world now if i want my string let me put it here square brackets there is a something like if i want to type everything everything so colon colon so start from the very beginning and end at the very end hello world you don't often see this one because basically this is the same as my string right my string is the string itself hello world right hello world so you don't see this often but why we would use this one because sometimes you don't want you don't want to type all the letters of the string all or all the components of the string sometimes you want to jump what do i mean so let me give this to if now i say okay python print for me my string but jump type one letter then jump skip the next letter then type one letter then skip how do i do that i'm telling python print all the letters from the very beginning till the very end and here i will write two tick a skip so see what happens here hello world h printed yes then e skipped then l printed the second one is skipped and so on i can increase the jump by three or by four so i'm taking the h then skip e l l then the o is okay and so on okay what else another trick you can reverse see minus one what if i type minus one what will give me it's reverse see hello world reversed so minus one tells okay print everything from the very beginning till the very end but reversed order d l o r o and so on d l r o w and so on this is reversed this is a good trick if you want to reverse your string reverse the order of your string what else we can we can do also my string okay square brackets let's try this one okay this will give me everything right but here if i say okay start don't start from the very beginning start from the second index or index number two then finish at index number seven let's say or index number six and take a step two what will happen here see l l and o what happened here i start from the second one zero one l this is number two finish at the sixth one four three four five six okay and 
I ignore the sixth because there's a space only and take two as a skip. So I'm skipping, I'm taking zero, one, two. I'm taking the L, sorry. I'm taking the L, then skip two, L and O, then do the next stop at the six zero one two three four five six don't include the o the last one is the last one is the space so is the last printed is the letter o sorry the last letter printed is o because again zero one two i started at the l typed l here okay zero one two then three four is the o five space six is sixth is the w but it will not be taking the w it will not be taken why because it's not included so the last letter will be printed is the letter o the last letter will be printed is the letter o okay perfect i will see you in the next video and more about slicing and indexing and more practice thank you and see you shortly Welcome everyone. In this lesson, we are going to learn and extend our skills about strings. In the previous videos, we learned about strings, about how to slice them, how, how to index them. And today, in this video, we are going to learn what does it mean that strings are immutable, how to change a letter or item inside a string using concatenation, and we'll explain what does it mean with examples. Then we'll take more examples to make uh, the idea clear. Then we learn about strings multiplication and uh, some errors or mistakes we need to avoid. And then we'll end this lesson by learning about built-in methods regarding strings. So let's start. So let's take a string name equals mark. Name equals mark. In the previous videos, we learned that if I want to grab the letter M from the beginning, simply I can open square brackets and put the index of the letter m which is zero we said always we start from zero and then if i hit control enter it retains m right the letter m the letter m imagine for any reason that i would like to change the letter m with the letter d to make it dark instead of mark dark so how can i do that someone might think that okay m zero let me reassign it to the letter d okay let's see what happens here and Python will retain an error. And the error says here, the type of error string, the str, the string, is an object which doesn't support item assignment. It doesn't support item assignment. It means you cannot assign an item inside the string to something specific, to the letter D in this case, okay? We cannot assign the item zero to letter D because a string is immutable immutable it cannot be changed immutable cannot be changed so how can we do that how can we change the letter m to letter d there is a special technique called concatenation which is adding two strings or adding uh, using the plus sign let's see how it works so first of all what i will do is i will take everything i will remove the letter m by taking everything beside or after the letter m how to do that simply name and previous lesson we learned if i want to take everything after the letter m i will say okay i will take one this is the m is zero index a is one r two k three so i'll take everything everything from one till the end right till three or till four actually but simple way is just to take till the end control enter let's make sure and it re returns arc returns arc now what I will do is simply I will tell Python add to the name from one till the end add to this line the letter D simple like this how do you add using plus sign so D plus name from one till the end should give me dark dark excellent yes now you might ask okay if I put three here zero one two three the K it will not return the same why is that because just to refresh from the previous lesson we said python will take the third one but will not include it so if you want to take the last letter you just go one plus okay or simply just keep it open just if you are wondering why i kept it open or i didn't write three here okay this is clear now let's take one example for you let's take an example for you let me jump 
to let's say the name now or let me write it here I have this exercise for you I will give it a few minutes take your time pause the video try to do it yourself similar to what I did before and then come back we continue and we solve it together the exercise says I have a string name equals joy change the name into Roy from joy to Roy using strings concatenation using strings concatenation okay take a few minutes pause the video make sure you practice it yourself Python is about in practice practice it do it yourself then come back and watch us doing together okay perfect now let's go ahead and do it so I have name equals joy and let me just confirm name it will give me joy if I call it perfect now I want to change it to Roy so I need to change the letter J to letter R correct so I will take everything after the J so from one till the end I don't care how many letters after let me make sure I have it O and Y excellent then before that I need to add the letter R so I will say R as a string make sure as a string plus my name the name one till the end and this is Roy this is Roy right also here you can write a three it will give you the same why three not two again because zero one two the letter Y is two but Python doesn't include the last letter doesn't include the last index okay so always the better safe just keep it open Roy excellent so this is concatenation another example and be careful here see what happens here what do you think will happen here if I add two strings these are strings okay two and five these are two strings because I have the co double quotation right what do you think will happen here what should be the answer is it 20 2 plus 5 zero, 7 or 2 5 what should Python give me back let's try it together and see what happens then we explain it this is 2 plus 5 and the answer is 25 because Python using these or treating these two numbers are as strings as strings 2 5 they just Python will just put them beside each others just put them beside each other if you want to make sure let me put space sorry the space here not in the comment and run and see there's a space here okay perfect make sure you it's a clear for you this one okay because tomorrow you are writing a code you're putting it as a string then you want to make to sum them together and then the answer will be wrong huh? and the problem maybe the Python is not retaining and error because this is a flexible Python is a flexible and give you yes I can do that I can sum I can concatenate two strings but you are expecting different answer maybe someone is ex expecting two plus five seven so make sure this is clear okay one thing also we can do let me add a code here let me add a code here and let's say for example y equals um let's say y equals or let me say name equals um z okay let's say name equals z now i can do my multiplication and the here it's a string of course so just let's make sure and let's say if i want name times 10 and the answer will be 10 z right 10 z don't expect to be 10 then z beside it no this is multiplication right multiplication okay if you are wondering what will happen if name plus 10 and the answer will be error why is that can only concatenate string because 10 is integer right you can multiply multiply name a string by a number by integer but you cannot do a summation you cannot sum a string plus a integer so how can we solve this one for example I can do like this I can change the integer to string let's see now and now z 10 I add z and 10 let's go back just one step let me just read again the error and says can only concatenate str not integer okay you cannot add integer to string very important you cannot add or concatenate integer to a string okay clear make sure it's a clear more examples so here imagine that we have this string y equals hello world 
and then I would like to add two strings for example I can say y plus it is beautiful day and if I hit run hello world it's beautiful day and see here there is no space between word and it so simply I can just add a space here and click enter hello world it's a beautiful day so I can do this one also yes okay now what happens if I do this y equals y plus so let's run the code again and see what happens here y equals I assigned it now let me return y I call y and hello world it's a beautiful day now if I run the cells again run this hello world it's a beautiful day okay it's now the new y it's the sum or the concatenation of the old y plus it is beautiful day not the original one because I reassigned y right so this should be clear for us okay now this is about the strings how we concatenate them together and some errors to avoid now let's move ahead and let's check some strings built in methods there are some methods and functions built into python later on in a little bit more advanced we are going inshallah to learn about how to create our own functions and methods but for now let's learn some built in methods so for example if i have a string hello world okay now if i return if i call z it's hello world and now see what happens if i add a dot wait a second and a list will appear a list will appear with all these methods these methods that i can use i can do some operations or methods into my string let's take i will not go all over all of these you can explore some of them alone but we'll see many of these as we go okay so let me take first the upper imagine I want to change all the letters of my string into uppercase see it's here upper and I will run this one it will return and error let's see function str upper okay so this is Python simply didn't return an error but also didn't give me what I'm looking for it didn't give me what I'm looking for because my goal is to change the letters of hello world all to capital letters to uppercase right so why it didn't happen because the methods always need brackets remember this empty brackets enter now it returns hello world hello world okay now the same i can do z lower as you can expect and the brackets and hello world all are small all are small right hello now if I call it again let's see it gives me the original one hello world okay so this doesn't change these what I did z dot upper or z dot lower doesn't change the original string if you want to change it so you can reassign it so now we run it see small letter but we don't want let's keep the original one what else we can do we can do z dot split if I want to split my string and let's see what does it do it retains a list we didn't learn lists yet we are going to see them soon but it retains a list and separate splits all the items inside my string hello and word hello and word okay so I have hello alone comma then word inside a list okay let's see another example then we finish this lesson let's say x equals a string it is a beautiful day it's a beautiful day let me take back x run it it's a beautiful day now if i say x dot split and split it for me it is a beautiful day now this is clear now what if I want to split based on some conditions for example I would like to split whenever you have a letter I do a split okay and it tells me error from where to where from the beginning till the end and that's error oh no 
Hello everyone and welcome to this lesson. In this lesson, we are going to learn about print formatting using strings with strings. What we are going to learn is a strings interpolation and this is a fancy way to say adding variable into a string. We are going to talk about it with examples and for that we have two main methods. One is dot format method and the other one is the if strings method. Let's see examples and see what does it mean. So for example, first of all print we learned the print initially in the previous lessons print and print means that return to me on the screen give me the output of whatever inside the print right let's say here the famous example hello world and if i run this code and give me hello world hello world right what if i want to add something after we learned a few things i can say add concatenation right but also let's see other methods and very famous for that so example number one let's say I want print then open the brackets then it's a string so double quotation or a single quotation this is my string then very important curly braces not a bracket curly braces because curly braces tells python there is a variable coming in there is a variable coming in then close your string dot format this is our method dot format then after the dot format this is a brackets because here you will put for python what it requires what to fill in the bracket in the curly braces right in the variable place here so here i will tell python i would say this is number one and if I run this code, this is my string number one. See, I added them together. I added this is my string with the variable here, with number one, with this another string, directly using the dot format method. And here I can change anything. I can just make it a number and control enter. This is my string one. Okay, you can change, you can write anything you want. And later on in the more advanced lessons, we are going to see it can be also a longer code. It can be conditional or it can be depending on the previous output. But for now, we are just introducing the method to understand the syntax, to understand how to use it and how to perform it. So this is dot .format method. Also, what happens now? Let's explore a little bit just to make sure we notice important things. We said here, this is curly braces. What if I do normally brackets this will give python or let me run it and we will see it together but it will give python it python will pro will do just printing the string this is my string okay and ignored everything after it closed the brackets closed the double quotation and everything else is ignored so make sure this is a variable here you are telling python wait for me i'm going to give you a I'm going to give you a uh, inform or information to add it into this curly braces, which is using the dot format method. It's number one. What if I leave nothing here and there will be an error replacement index zero. This is index zero because there is only one thing, one, one br uh, curly braces out of range for positional argument. There is nothing. You return me nothing. So you need to return me thing. What if I add it as a number here? This is my string one. This is my string one. Okay. And this one is integer as you see here. If I want to make it as a string, this is my string one. This is my string number one also. What if I add it like this? What will happen? There will be an error. There will be an error in valid syntax because this need to be, this is number one is a string. So you need to put double quotation double quotation this is number one okay perfect let's see more examples we can also print double quotation again it's a string so the world is beautiful for example right that dot format then open the brackets another example and say just anything xxx now there will be an error why who can tell us why there will be an error and python tells you where is the error right it's under so if I run this code, xxx is not defined because xxx, you didn't tell me x, what is xxx before. Also, you didn't tell me that it's a string. So if I tell Python, it's a string, xxx, run the code, the word is a beautiful, okay? And here, another thing to note, why Python didn't return to me the xxx? I said the word is a beautiful, then dot format xxx, what did I forget? I forgot to tell Python 
wait for me I'm going to enter you I am going to give you a variable where is this variable it's coming after the format so the curly braces here tells Python the word is beautiful and there's something coming where is this thing it's after the dot format method if I run the code now the word is beautiful XXX okay so if you don't add this if you don't add the curly braces Python will just take the first string and ignore after okay now curly braces perfect now what if I want to do this does it work so if I write the then curly braces another one and another one and inside the format I will tell Python the first string the first one add for me the word world the second one add for me is all as strings okay make sure you remember this and the third one will be beauty beautiful beautiful and if I run this the word is a beautiful also we can do that right we can keep three variables and where are these variables after the dot format after the dot format method perfect now also another thing I can call the index so word is beautiful I have three items this is index 0 index 1 index 2 right we learned this before I start from 0 1 2 so I can tell Python return for me 0 1 2 and the answer will be the word is beautiful can I change that also I can make it one 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 the word what's the answer here should be is 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 right the is 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 can I shuffle them yes I can put two one zero for example run the code the beautiful is word right you can do that now what happens if I give one of the index as out of the range right I have zero one two if I give it three control enter an error and the error makes sense replacement index 3 you are giving me index 3 it's out of range I don't have this I don't have range 3 there is only 0 1 2 3 there is nothing 3 so make sure also this is within the range so I'll keep it empty Python when you keep it empty understands the first one is the first one second second and third is third okay now run the code again and all good no errors and the last thing we can call the keyword what does it mean I can say print open in brackets this is my string I can say the then curly braces another one another one then after my double quotation dot format open brackets and in the brackets I will tell Python what to enter for me I want word I want is I always get this is and the last one is beautiful right beauty I miss this beautiful beautiful excellent now if I run this code the word is beautiful okay perfect what can I do also I can say okay Python W equals word I equals is and B equals beautiful if I run this code there will be an error replacement index zero out of range now see what happens here if I add W I and B the word is a beautiful I can also call the code by giving keywords by identifying word is W is is I beautiful is B okay and then enter this short or keywords or letter I can say anything here I can say one equals word now there will be an error because this is an integer so what we can do is either we keep this one yes and double equals but also what I can do give any letter can be today but in this case you need to change the W right so today you can what my point is you can write anything you want you can write anything you want the word is beautiful even I wrote today but today equals word here so let's make it now it makes sense the point to have something to indicate for you w equals word now today there is no today key error today python tells you today means nothing so this is my w the word is beautiful the word is beautiful perfect of course i can also do this i can call whatever i want the word 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 right 
so you can play around it you can change it you can use it the way you like it and this is maybe better than the first one because i mean the first one is with index with 0 1 2 because 0 1 2 are abstract doesn't relate to anything here w okay makes yeah and it gives you an indication w is word i is be beautiful and so on so perfect i'll stop here with the first method and in the next video we are going to explore the second method f strings method thank you very much and see you shortly welcome everyone in this lesson we are going to continue on our discussion how to print formatting with the strings so the first video part one we discussed the dot format method for example if i have name equals a string moson and i can say print then my brackets my string i say my name my name is then i put my curly bra curly braces dot format right and then i put what is my input which is name in this case right and here don't forget let's say okay my name is Mozon my name is Mozon you can change name of course with Mozon directly but then you need to put the string because Mozon is not identified is not identified unlike name name is identified name means Mozon but Mozon is not defined okay Mozon is not a variable it's a string so I need to put a string we saw this in the previous video now there is another way I can say instead of typing the dot format I can remove all that dot format now and I put here at the beginning F that's it F my name is and put my variable directly into the curly braces which is name in this case right my name is my name is Mozn name Mozn my name is Mozn correct straightforward easy you just have F at the beginning then whatever your variable is put it in the in the curly braces also let's see a little bit more complex I can say name equals Mozon age equals let's say 5 and then I can say print string my name is then here I put name and my age is and i put what i put age and of course i need to use one of the methods either i put dot format and then i put my variables here or since i put name and age in the variables it directly in the curly bra uh, braces directly so it's easy just put f at the beginning and see what happens once we add f so everything is in red now I add F the F itself has a special color and also the variables change the colors so this is also good to give you that yes this what you are doing is in the right direction let's say if I run this code my name is Moz and my age is 5 is 5 if I I had years for example it will add it here okay everything is simple straightforward you can straightforward enter what you like okay perfect so we saw two methods and the if you want to compare just let me put the two methods together print under each other's I can say my name is and here I will keep it empty and my age is and again and here dot format and here I will put my input I can put for the first one is name and the second one is age let's see if there is any error my name is Mosin and my age is five and here my name is and what happened here why we didn't have the input first of all let me make this one as a comma comment what happened here in the second one who can tell us why it didn't input the name and the age and the reason is clear kind of because Python here copied everything typed everything and put it here down because look at my quotations at the beginning and at the end which is not correct it need to be just before the dot and here should work seek the colors change and the error line disappeared and now 
my name is Mozen and my age is 5 if I remove this comment and let's see print both of them they will be exactly the same so this the first one is exactly equivalent to the second one it's up to you which one you would like to use the first one seems to be shorter straightforward but it's up to you the 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 first one the if strings method this one this is a newly added to python and a newly i mean after the dot format method okay after and it was required because it came also it's similar to other programming languages so also it's obvious why people wanted it because it's straightforward you have the if at the beginning then you put your variables exactly inside the inside your curly braces it's up to you which one you would like both will give you the same results here okay perfect by this we finish introducing the print formatting methods with the strings next videos we are going to learn a new topic just one last comment here or one last note what whatever we are doing here is just introducing the concepts introducing the codes breaking the ice with the with python with the programming language so we know the concepts the basics later on we will introduce more projects more applications and see real life examples so everything will fall together will be will come together and make sense okay and we'll see real life examples practical examples where we will use all these techniques print formatting with the strings dot format if strings variables slicing indexing and so on so keep going and i will see you in the next video welcome everyone in this video we are going to learn about lists lists in python and this is another data type so we learned about variables strings and now let's talk about lists so a list is an ordered sequence that can hold different object types what does it mean this is an example of a list it starts with a bracket and then it close the bracket square bracket okay there are square brackets at the beginning and at the end not round one not circle one then you have object types it can be anything it can be integer it can be string it can be float and separated by a comma we are going to see many examples then we are going also to see the length of a list how to find that then we'll see some examples of indexing and slicing as we did to the strings and then concatenation and similar way to strings and very important thing lists are immutable unlike the strings which are immutable lists are mutable we are going to see that also and then we'll learn about the append method append method and a few other things so there is a lot to cover let's jump in and start so examples of lists we have let's start a new code here for example i can say list one equals then we said square brackets sorry square brackets and then one two three four five as many as you want then run the code and this is list one if list one i want to call it i want to type it on the screen the output is one two three four five so this is list one i can define list two for example is square brackets and then i would say six seven eight nine and ten and this is list oh I made the mistake here list two not with without the k then i will go let me call it again list two and now i have six seven eight nine ten and if you are wondering why list one didn't appear in the output because only the last thing will appear if you want everything to appear if you want list one also to appear then you need to add the print right print and let's close it and now if we run the code you will have both of them you have print because the print always will show on the output and also the last thing will show okay which is list two okay perfect now we have list one and list two now does the list include other type of objects besides integers these are integers one two three four five till ten these are integers what if i say list three equals square brackets 
then I have a string let's say a string let me just make it a string string with the double quotation or single quotation then I have an integer then also I can have a float float remember with a decimal 4.6 does it work if I run the code yes no errors then if I call list 3 and the output will be string 1 4.6 so it works it works there is no problem at all now if I want to retain the length of the list the length means how many items inside my list how many items so I can say length of list 1 and if I run the code it's 5 because I have 1 2 3 4 5 what about list 2 there are also five what about list three there are three items excellent this is the length so you can check how many items inside your list then slicing and indexing we can do that by simply similar way to the string I can say list one then which item do you want from item one I want number one then it's what is the index of number one it's index zero because we start with zero if I run the code it will retain one what about four item four is zero one two three four which is five what if I retain out of range there should be what exactly there will be error because list index out of range there is no item with the index number five right one two three zero one two three four so the last one is four perfect what if I change just for more examples and here I say give me from list number two the item with index three which is nine zero one two three right I can also do the opposite give me minus two so minus one minus two also nine minus one should be ten perfect so also indexing this is called indexing right can I slice yes we can this is slicing yeah slicing based on the index of the item inside the list this is a slicing but can I slice a range yes so if I take slice or list three list three then from list three give me all the items or three is short let's make it two huh? let's make it two for example list two. Oh, sorry so list two give me all the items from the beginning so this is from the beginning I put nothing then I put the colon then till item let's say with the index 3 and if I run the code it will give me 678 let's confirm I have from the beginning this is beginning 0 1 2 3 so from 6 to 9 but as we agreed before 9 will not be included because Python says I'll give you everything from the beginning till index 3 not including it without including 3 without including the index 3 right so 9 will be excluded if you want to include 9 then increase the range to 4 and now 9 will be included 9 will be included perfect this is slicing and indexing concatenation also we know what is that we saw it in strings so what I can do list 1 plus list 2 does it work let's confirm with Python and now we have error why is that because list 1 and list 2 are we need to just change list 1 and list 2 I did a mistake because list 1 and list 2 are not defined are not defined right I put numbers here it should be 1 and 2 just to be sure our input is correct now if I run the code everything is perfect so I have list 1 from 1 2 3 till 5 1 2 3 4 5 till here then list 2 from 6 to 10 6 to 10 perfect what if I add another one list 3 will it be included perfect I have string 1 4.6 everything is there everything is there this is concatenation we did the same with the strings we can do the same with lists there is no problem okay can I do this trick for example what if I say times 2 here what will happen see list 1 multiplied by 2 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 it doesn't mean don't make mistake that 
1 will be multiplied by 2 that's 2 then 2 by 2 4 3 by 2 6 4 by 2 8 no it will just repeat list number 1 list 1 will be repeated how many times 2 times if I put 3 it will be repeated 3 times okay if I remove from here and say list 2 times 3 also yes so you have it here because so long but it's the same it's the same okay if I make 2 also here yeah 6 7 8 9 10 6 7 8 9 10 and list 3 let's say by 2 and it's so long so it will put it this way if I remove the 2 from here now it's in one line it's the same string 1 4.6 string 1 4.6 so you can also do these things what else okay what if I do this plus 2 can you uh, can you guess what will be the output can you guess what will be the output okay did you guess that there will be an error because 2 is integer you remember in the in the strings when we tried to add a string to an integer it didn't work there was an error the same with the list you cannot add you cannot add a list to an integer correct we can add a list to a list but list to integer it doesn't work what about list to string let's try again the same not string here you can only concatenate lists to a list not to a string so this need to be a list can I do it this way for example two let's see and now it's okay so we have list one one two three four five then two then six seven eight nine ten list two then list three string one four point six I'm trying to show you as many examples as possible the best way to learn is to do these things to try can I do this one what if I change what there will be there an error or it will work and you learn from the errors you learn from the errors what does it mean if I add two here and run the code now there is an error what is the error you read especially the last line can only concatenate list to list list to a list not integer you put an integer you cannot do that okay perfect let me remove these things and now what another type of error if I have list one list list two you forget the plus sign invalid syntax because list one list two they are defined but what are you trying to do there is nothing between them so this is the right way okay perfect this is done the lists are mutable what does it mean now if I have list one let me print it let me type it on the screen one two three four five now if I say list one item number one and let's say item number one which is index zero I want it I want to change it not one I want it to be for example 10 will it work let's see yes there is no error if I call list underscore one and now I call list one ten very good I changed the item one to ten from one to ten perfect so you can change you can change for example it works let's say this is my list equals and let's put names for example Sam mark then Roy let's say these are students then I won't say okay Sam is no longer with us I want to sense uh, I want to change Sam so I will say my list okay and then item number zero index zero equals now let's say John okay John and there is an error if I click enter here because I need to make a string and double quotation here and now should be okay now if I recall if I call my list John Mark Roy so you can change because lists are mutable lists are mutable perfect this is done then append method there are many methods in the list so I can say for example imagine that I have my list so my list let's print it John Mark Roy John Mark Roy right now if I say my list and dot and of course just 
right let's type the name correct my list dot and now here my list dot now there will be different options methods will appear huh? there are many let's try append for example append and remember from the previous videos you need always brackets and if i append append does what it adds it adds some items to the list now let's see before i continue let me see if i run the code append takes exactly one argument you give nothing so you want to append you are telling python add or append to my list some items python is saying where are the items you added nothing here i can say for example muson and if i click enter now run the code okay no errors perfect let me call my list now my list and now see john mark roy muson perfect so it's added it is added this is very important okay we'd like to try more i can say my list then dot then wait a second for the list to appear then you have different options you can reverse you can sort let's try reverse and don't forget the brackets i will not go over all of them i would like you to practice you you can play around them there is no way any lesson any course that covers everything in python or in any other subject so the best way is to practice to see what options are there the best way also is to implement and do projects which we are going to do together inshallah in later later lessons so my list dot reverse there is no error and if i call my list now it's the opposite it's reversed now it was john mark roy muzon now it's muzon roy mark john okay so what i told python is take my list and reverse it okay take my list and reverse it i didn't have to add anything in between because it's enough take my list and reverse it that's it while in the previous one my list take my list and add to it python will ask add what okay so that's why we need to put something in between perfect let me stop this video here practice do some exercises open your python and i will see you in the next video welcome everyone in this lesson i would like to add a few things to the list before we close it and we move to dictionaries close it for now of course we are going to see it later but as introductory so i would like to introduce the pop and pop and sort methods and let me make these comments and let's see examples let me define let's say my list equals one five eight three zero twelve and random numbers okay these random numbers now if i say my list run the code to return it takes just a few seconds because it's a new notebook and see this is a list includes integers includes integers right and return it as it is as it is now if i say my list dot pop pop will do what is the opposite of append the opposite of append so append adds item item or items pop removes item and here i don't have to tell python which item to remove because by default by default python will add will remove sorry will remove or will pop the last item the 45 let's see my list dot pop and it retains the popped item and if i return now if i call my list again i will see the list without the 45 okay one five eight three zero twelve sixty seven thirty four and it removed both because remote 45 and seven eight nine because i run i run this code twice i run this code twice first time i run it then when i added my list it was run again so that's why two items if i run it again it will remove also the 34 and i will end up with 67 run it again it's 12 more and so on okay now if i say here my list and let's call it it's updated with the last with the last entry if i say pop again just to make sure everything is okay it removed zero now if i 
now if I run the code if I say my okay call my list it will run both the first code and the second code okay it will run the code my pop again because because what happened here I run this code and it removed zero now my list include these items one five eight three now if I say okay Python type for me my list if I run the code what will happen the first code will be implemented will be applied so it will remove the three in this case and then my list will be printed which is one five eight let's see it one five eight okay to avoid that you can either make it as a comment sorry you can just make it as a comment which is adding a hashtag at the big okay in this case it will not be executed so this is pop someone might ask okay let me see let me introduce a new list let's say list one okay and say this is one five seven nine two random numbers okay execute it all good list one run the code and this is my list now someone says okay I would like to list one I would like to dot pop I don't want to remove the last item five six seven I want to remove item the first item for example item number item which is one which has the index of what of zero so simply you can add zero and if I run the code it will retain the removed item and if I go ahead and say list one if I will run the code now it will execute the first row again so I don't want to do that I will just type I would like just to type the up updated list which is everything except number one except number one okay now this is for the pop there is another method I would like to introduce which is let's say list one dot sort sort by the name obviously it does what it sort the items in your list sort the items in your list so if I run the code done now if I call it list one let's see the sorted list two five seven two five seven nine two three four from the smallest to the largest okay this will sort the items and the list will be updated as well okay so list number list one now is starting from two and ends with five six seven so these are additional two methods they are helpful we learned how many methods so far with the list we learned reverse which does what the reverse reverses the reverses the list obviously then we append and this add items and you need to specify what is the item you want to add it to the list then we saw pop which is the opposite of append and then lastly we saw the sort which sorts the items inside the list so perfect i think that's good for the list take your time practice create some lists play around with them and try to do some intentional errors let me call them intentional mistakes for example if we forget here in list one we removed we removed the comma what will happen there will be an error invalid syntax because there is a space here should not space either you put a comma or no space and now everything is okay but the number is different huh? so you need a comma for example if i changed i made this one is normally bracket closing parentheses doesn't match opening parentheses so it's a square you started with a square and with a square okay if i change it to circle it's okay then but because it's a list we need to as square what else we can do what about here if i add text one for example there will be an error also because one is not defined you want a string then make it string how do you make it string by simply adding quotations adding quotations so now everything is okay can we work on this with sort let's see add sort and not supported between instances of string and integer so the sort doesn't work so python will say okay you want me to sort it how i can sort the numbers or i can sort the string the text but both together what is the rule to sort 
so it's not defined it's not supported okay perfect i think these are good examples take your time practice and keep going i will see you in the next video welcome everyone in this video we are going to learn about dictionaries about dictionaries in python very interesting lesson let's go ahead and start about dictionaries dictionaries are unordered mapping for sorting objects so unlike the lists lists can have mapped or ordered sequence of objects in the dictionary is different we have unordered mapping for objects and we are going to see that in examples also dictionaries include a key and a value pair key and value pair key and value and they are separated by a colon and they are separated by colon also dictionaries use curly braces okay unlike the list lists use what they use square brackets dictionaries use curly braces examples this is one example d equals and you can hear d for dictionary equals curly braces then you have a string as a key colon then a value key then a value okay let's remove the comments here and see for example if i want to call the dictionary now run the code there is error because indentation see there is indentation unnecessary so we remove it and now indentation means this space python is asking why did you add this space before because it's important when we come to the for and while loop and other things but for now just keep it without any space any tabs so here if i call my dictionary it's key one colon value one key two colon value two now what if i want to find the value for key one simply i just add key one key one and if i run the code it returns the value it returns the value that is associated with key one and this is good for example a practical example when you have a store for us st you have a store and you have items with their prices like the example here we have prices as a dictionary and here if i remove the comments prices is a dictionary which equals orange as a key then the value is a three let's say the price of orange is a three dollars or whatever then apple the price is two banana the price is five now i don't care about the index about the position of each item i care about the price now if i want to retain first of all before we return anything let's print let's type this dictionary orange three apple two banana five everything is okay now if i want to know the price of orange i want to know the price of orange i don't care where orange is stored which index at the beginning at the middle at the end i don't care i care about the price of orange so how can i return it i just simply type orange orange oops perfect and now if i run the code it will return number three it will return three as the price now i know the price of orange is it three dollars for example without knowing where is orange exactly the same i can do for apple i can know the price of apple is two and the same for banana okay and the same for banana so this is good example how to know associated value for a certain key the key in this case is orange the the vegetables or the fruit and the value is the price now another thing we need to see that here we saw is this the inputs are strings and also integers can I, can can the dictionary include a float yes it can now if i run the code before that let me call prices and remove everything else run the code prices returns it can include float floating numbers can include strings can include numbers anything okay here for example i can change the price of banana and it will return let's say not available not available and if i return prices everything okay and if someone is asking about the price of banana what will happen banana it will return the value which is not available so we see it's a string apple it has a value of integer and orange has a value of floating point number 
okay another thing we need to see is let me remove the comments from this code and now now we have this a little bit complex looks complex right a little confusing dictionary so i have my dictionary my d equals i have a key key one and the value 10 integer key two and the value here is a list is a list which includes some strings so also the dictionary can include values as lists or as dictionaries which we don't see often but also it's correct so now if i call my dictionary my d let me call it it will return everything okay there is no error so i see there is integer list there is a dictionary also as a value and inside the dictionary i can have even more complex other dictionaries or other lists and so on but let's not make it complex now if i want to grab for example nice i want to return nice how can i do that i can say my dictionary my d then i want which item I want this is 0 index 0 k2 is index 1 k3 is index 2 so I will return 2 and what we will return here sorry we uh, I'm sorry we we don't this is very good this is very good because now unlike the lists we don't return the index right what we do we need to return we don't input the index we input the key and he, it, here it's key k3 i want first to return everything associated with k3 which is everything here so key underscore inside colon nice everything this dictionary this sub dictionary will be returned if i click enter key inside and nice now inside this sub dictionary which is key inside and nice I want to return which item nice so simply I will enter key inside key underscore inside did I type it correct yes and now it will return for me nice it will return nice can I do methods on this if I put upper and open in brackets and it paid it capital letters uppercase okay so a very important distinction here I will write it as a comment dictionaries use key value pairs not index okay not index so this is we saw it when I tried to do my dictionary and then I said okay I want everything associated with k3 which I was thinking okay this is 0 this is 1 this is 2 so let me put 2 here and it should return to me this but this is wrong because dictionaries they don't work work with indexing if I run this code there will be a mistake an error okay and the error simply because this is not a list this is a dictionary so here I need I need to use the correct format which is k3 and then I will give the key the key is key inside key inside associated with key and the associated value is nice if I run this one now and of course we need to remove my dictionary nice and as any as any list or any dictionary you can use the methods upper for example you can use other methods wherever applicable so let's take one more example just because it's a little bit confusing especially at the beginning now here let me remove the comment I have test is a dictionary let's break it down it's it has one value which is one two and m it has one key key and associated value and the value is a list the value is a list let me print test key one two m so one key one value the value is a list now if i want to return m the letter m if i want to return the letter m what i do i need from my test return for me the whole 
value here which is 1 to m and how do I retain this list or this value by inputting the key associated with it what which is key the word key and if I run this code I will have as output a list now from this list I need to return the letter M which has which index because this is a list so I need an index here 0 1 2 index 2 I run this code it returns the letter M if I want to make the letter M uppercase for example simply write upper and don't forget the brackets and now I have letter M so these are a few things about dictionaries very useful especially when you don't care about the position or the indexing of the item inside your dictionary and if you have pair of values a key and a value like price list of items very good job keep going and I will see you in the next video we'll come again in this video we are going to continue a few things about the dictionaries so I have a dictionary D equals key 1 10 key 2 20 k2 20 k3 30 okay this is a dictionary let me call my dictionary d k110 k220 k330 k440 this is a dictionary now i can add items to the dictionary for example i can say k dictionary and in my dictionary the d i want k5 okay k5 and k5 equals 50 now if I call D print it it added k5 so like this I can add items to my dictionary perfect now I don't need this D perfect now also I can replace items I can say in my dictionary D the item with or associated with k1 make it instead of 10 it was 10 now i want to make it let's say 100 run the code all good now if i say run d see k1 is 100 now k1 is 100 perfect this is how to add items or reassign items now also i can find all the keys in my dictionary d dot keys using d dot keys and if you run this code it will retain all the keys in your dictionary k1 k2 k3 k4 k5 inside a list this is for example here if you want to see all the vegetables or all the items in your in your prices list you can say prices dot keys correct prices dot keys prices dot keys and because i forgot the brackets it python is telling me this is a function dictionary keys huh? and i just put the brackets and then it will return me all the items orange apple and banana and if i need the values i will say prices dot values and don't forget the brackets and that will bring me back 3.232 and not available these are the prices or the values for the items in my dictionary okay these are the keys the values if I want to see all if I want to see all my items simply I will say dictionary or D dot items and then brackets and if you press enter it brings back everything k100 everything okay and they are inside the brackets so it means they are tuples don't worry about it we'll talk about it in the next lessons these are the values keys items how to assign how to replace how to add items and so on so let's quickly summarize what we studied about dictionaries we said dictionaries are unordered mapping okay they include a key and a value as a pair and they start and end with curly braces every time you need to include a key and a value the items inside a dictionary they can be strings can be floating numbers float numbers can be integers can be dictionary can be list can be anything almost also 
we saw how to index or slice items inside a dictionary how to change and use some special methods like upper built-in methods how to return all the keys all the values all the items in my dictionary how to assign or reassign to reassign where is d1 dk1 equal 100 how to reassign values for my keys and how to add values and keys inside my dictionary so that's about it for dictionaries thank you very much and i will see you in the next video welcome everyone in this video we are going to have an explanation overview for an assignment about dictionaries so in this video i will go through the assignment and explain it and in the next video we are going through the solution for the assignment so make sure that after we after you watch this video take your time do the exercises finish the assignment yourself try to learn the things that you are not feeling strong with or you are facing errors and you are not sure how to do it then come back and watch the next video for the solutions so the assignment on dictionaries number one part one is creating and modifying dictionaries first question create a dictionary called student that contains the following key value pairs name john smith age 25 courses math and physics and here not note that courses is a list second question add a new key value pair to the dictionary called phone with the value five 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 one two one two okay this is just a random number or any random number question number three update the value for the key age to 26 so change it it was 25 change it to 26 question number four remove the key value pair for courses remove the key value pair for courses if you are not sure how to do this one question number four do some research search on google how to remove a key value pair in dictionaries in python the point is i put this question even though we didn't go through it exactly but we need to develop the skills that in programming in general tasks and problems and projects will not come as a standard so you need to do some search some exploration some research on google on some documentation from python how to perform a certain task so it's good to start as early as possible to develop this skill part two accessing dic dictionary values question number one access the value for the key name and assign it to a variable called name and question number two access the value for the key phone and assign it to a variable called phone if the key doesn't exist print a message saying phone number not found and this is optional because it's a little bit more advanced than this level okay perfect take your time and i'll see you in the next vid video with the solutions hello everyone let's continue in this video and see and look at the solution for the assignment for the assignment on the dictionaries so the first question was create a dictionary called the student that contains the following key value pairs and we have a name age courses and a value for each key so i created here what we do we have a student this is the name of the dictionary equals then the dictionary always start with curly braces right then inside the key must be a string so name is a string and colon the name of the student or the value here for the key which is name john smith the value is john smith then i have another key age and the value is 25 then another key which is courses and a value which is a list math and physics now if i run this code student i have the output my dictionary name john smith age courses and so on okay second question add a new value add a new key value pair to the dictionary called phone with the value such and such so that's easy how do we add 
remember how do we add an element or an item or a key value pair to a dictionary you write the name of the dictionary student then between square brackets you put your key which is phone in this case equals then the value which is the phone number if you want to make sure just run the code call student and you have it here name john smith if you are wondering why it's not on one line just because of the space huh? just because of the space but everything is fine third one update the value for the key age to 26 i have it here 25 we need to change it 26 very easy same way student is the dictionary name put the key value age in this case and make it 26 run and the answer is 26 age here very good then remove the key value pair for courses and this we didn't study it but one way to remove is to use del del for delete 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 from where delete from dictionary student delete what delete the courses the courses once you delete the key the value will be deleted as well okay let's run the code and see the output now name age and phone and the courses disappeared the courses disappeared okay now see if i run the code again there will be an error who knows why we are receiving an error if we run the code second time simply because python will come to this code and say okay you are asking me to delete a key called courses but i don't have a key called courses anymore how is that because you deleted it before so we deleted the key courses it's not there anymore in the dictionary so if you are asking again running again the cell or the code it's not there so python will say courses is an error i don't have in my dictionary a key which is called courses so be careful with this if you want it again what you do you go back and you run the codes again so running this code i have it here courses the phone we added the phone we changed the age to 26 from 25 now do it again and you have everything okay and we deleted courses this is important let me show you another thing an error might happen run the cells again and this cell change the age perfect now if i remove student see now i want to delete see i have the courses here math and physics now i want to remove the courses perfect removed no errors everything is okay now if i call student and you keep it as it is you have python will will run the two lines the first line and the second line and once he reached to the first line what will happen it will give you an error because it's not there anymore so be careful write the code then call also call at the same time before running the code so write your line your code line call your dictionary then hit the run okay then hit the run otherwise it will not show and error will be there so i need to run the code again just to refresh of course i can put them all in one line but just to break down the assignment okay and then we have where are we part two accessing dictionary values access the value for the key name and assign it to a variable called name easy we say name this is a variable name equals student name right how do we access the key name simple student and between square brackets i put name right this is how we access any key in my dictionary then assign it to a variable called name this is name that's it if i run the code i have everything okay and the same for the phone access the value for the key phone and assign it to a variable called phone this is the first part perfect everything is okay if i call phone it will give me the phone and the same if i call name here it will give me the name which is john smith perfect the second part don't worry about it it's advanced we don't need it now we'll come back to it or similar to it when we study the if loop conditional formatting okay conditional loops okay if phone is there in the dictionary then return a certain value if it's not there then return another value if else or if l we are going to look at that in next section 
So this is the assignment. Make sure if you have any question, please post it and I will be more than happy to answer it. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video. Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to learn about tuples or tuples as some people say. So what is a tuple? Tuples are similar to lists, except they are immutable, immutable. And by now you are familiar with this term immutable. Immutable means they cannot be changed. The items inside the tuple can't be changed unlike the list right we are going to explore a few things indexing slicing link type count index and immutability for the tuples let's start with creating a tuple with a t and let's say and the tuple very important it's square brackets uh, sorry it's not square it's circular brackets okay normal ones and here i will add one two three four five for example this is tuple and I can create a list which is square and this is one two three four five same items and if I want let me call it my list because the color is different means it's reserved word for Python now if I say type the type of my T what is the type of T it takes a few seconds the first time for this notebook What's the type of t then i will check the type of my list it's tuple see type of t is tuple what about the type of my list it's a list okay then also i can use len the same for t what's the length of t five one two three four five the same the length for my list we saw it before we don't need again also i can do indexing for example i can say t give me the item with index 0 which is 1 also index 4 which is 5 now if it's out of range there will be an error which says tuple index out of range and we have seen this before with dictionaries or also not with dictionaries with the lists right so because 5 I don't have index 5 I have 0 1 2 3 4 now the number 5 index is 0 is 4 is 4 so the last one is 4 so here should be maximum 4 now if I run it everything okay also I can do for example from the beginning till second one I can do slicing it gives me 1 and 2 it's a tuple right and so on this is indexing and slicing also I can do some special methods I can say t dot if you want to see the methods inside dot write the name of the tuple then dot and here we have much less methods for tuples than or compared to lists right I have count and index let's see count and always as we know we need the brackets count now python says you want you ask me to count in your tuple t but you didn't tell me to count what what do you want me to count okay i would like to count how many times number one appears and I know it's one right one time now what if I change here one and one run the code again and three times here right what about number zero it's zero times okay so count counts how many times a certain item appeared okay and I have t dot index and if I put brackets let's see the error is index expected at least one argument get zero I want the index so let's see how it works I will go first change this one yes it's one and two and three and for example I want number three it's index two so zero one two number three so here I'm asking Python inside tuple t what is the item that has index what is the index sorry what is the index of number three it's zero one two two now i can check for five what is the index of number five it's four zero one two three four what is the index of number ten it's not there let's see the error tuple index x x is not in tuple so it says whatever you entered here and this tuple is not in the tuple okay is not there whatever you are asking for is not in your tuple 
I always like to play around and create intentionally mistakes and errors to know and to see how Python will respond to that. Okay, how Python will respond to that. So when we have a bigger program, more complex, if I receive a certain error, I know, okay, I saw this before. I know it's coming from where. Okay, by practice, time over time, you'll get familiar with these things. Now I change this to two and everything is perfect. Now let me take T again. What is T? T is one, two, three, four, five. And my list is one, two, three, five. Now in my list, I can reassign, right? We know the lists are mutable. I can reassign my list, for example, item index zero equals, let's say I want to change from one to 10. And if I run that, all good. Now, if I say my list, what is my list? My new updated list. Yes, instead of one is 10. So lists are mutable. I can change the items inside the list. I can. What about tuples? I can say T zero equals 10. Let's see what does Python say? It says error tuple object doesn't support item assignment. You cannot do this tuples because they are immutable they are immutable okay perfect so this one it's not possible so let's remove it make it a comment okay so these are quick summary about the tuples simple so tuple has circular parentheses you can check their type you can check their length similar to lists you can count how many times an item appeared you can check what is the index of any item and you cannot assign the items you cannot change the items inside the tuple they are immutable they are immutable now someone might ask okay why do we need the tuples if we have lists lists are more flexible and they have everything that tuples has so why do we need tuples that's a good question but for at the beginning, you will not see the benefits when you're starting with Python, but for more complex programs and projects, you will see sometimes you need some certain data sets. You don't want anyone to be able to change them by mistake or intentionally. You want them always to be the same. So that's great to use tuples at that time because tuples, once they are there, they cannot be changed. Okay, perfect. We'll see more in tup for tuples and other data structures and different assignments and projects. For now, try to practice, and I will see you in the next video. Welcome everyone. In this video, we are going to learn about lists, lists in Python. And this is another data type. So we learned about variables, strings, and now let's talk about lists. So a list is an ordered sequence that can hold different object types. What does it mean? This is an example of a list. It starts with a bracket and then a closed bracket, square bracket. Okay, there are square brackets at the beginning and at the end, not round one, not circle one. Then you have object types. It can be anything, it can be integer, it can be string, it can be float, and separated by a comma. We are going to see many examples. Then we are going also to see the length of a list, how to find that. Then we'll see some examples of indexing and slicing as we did to the strings and then concatenation and similar way to strings and very important thing lists are immutable unlike the strings which are immutable lists are mutable. We are going to see that also and then we'll learn about the append method append method and a few other things. So there is a lot to cover. Let's jump in and start. So examples of lists we have. Let's start a new code here. For example, I can say list one equals. Then we said square brackets. Sorry, square brackets. And then one, two, three, four, five, as many as you want. Then run the code. And this is list one if list one i want to call it i want to type it on the screen the output is one two three four five so this is list one i can define list two for example is square brackets and then i will say six seven eight nine and ten 
and this is list oh I made the mistake here list two not with without the K then I will go let me call it again list two and now I have six seven eight nine ten and if you are wondering why list one didn't appear in the output because only the last thing will appear if you want everything to appear if you want list one also to appear then you need to add a print right print and let's close it and now if we run the code you will have both of them you have print because the print always will show on the output and also the last thing will show okay which is list two okay perfect now we have list one and list two now does the list include other type of objects beside integers these are integers one two three four five till ten these are integers what if i say list three equals square brackets then i have a string let's say a string let me just make it a string string with the double quotation or single quotation then i have an integer then also i can have a float float remember with a decimal 4.6 does it work if i run the code yes no errors then if i call list three and the output will be string one four point six so it works it works there is no problem at all now if i want to retain the length of the list the length means how many items inside my list how many items so i can say length of list one and if i run the code it's five because i have one two three four five what about list two there are also five what about list three there are three items excellent this is the length so you can check how many items inside your list then slicing and indexing we can do that by simply similar way to the string i can say list one then which item do you want from item one i want number one then it's what is the index of number one it's index zero because we start with zero if i run the code it will retain one what about four item four is zero one two three four which is five what if i retain out of range there should be what exactly there will be error because list index out of range there is no item with the index number five right one two three zero one two three four so the last one is four perfect what if i change just for more examples and here i say give me from list number two the item with index three which is nine zero one two three right i can also do the opposite give me minus two so minus one minus two also nine minus one should be ten perfect so also indexing this is called indexing right can i slice yes we can this is slicing yeah slicing based on the index of the item inside the list this is a slicing but can i slice a range yes so if i take slice or list three list three then from list three give me all the items or three is short let's make it two huh? let's make it two for example list two oh sorry so list two give me all the items from the beginning so this is from the beginning i put nothing then i put the colon then till item let's say with the index three and if i run the code it will give me six seven eight let's confirm i have from the beginning this is beginning zero one two three so from six to nine but as we agreed before nine will not be included because python says i will give you everything from the beginning till index three not including it without including three without including the index three right so nine will be excluded if you want to include nine then increase the range to four and now nine will be included nine will be included perfect this is slicing and indexing concatenation also we know what is that we saw it in strings so what i can do list one plus list two does it work let's confirm with python 
and now we have error why is that because list one and list two are we need to just change list one and list two i did a mistake because list one and list two are not defined are not defined right i put numbers here it should be one and two just to be sure our input is correct now if i run the code everything is perfect so i have list one from one two three till five one two three four five till here then list two from six to ten six to ten perfect what if i add another one list three will it be included perfect i have string one four point six everything is there everything is there this is concatenation we did the same with the strings we can do the same with lists there is no problem okay can i do this trick for example what if i say times two here what will happen see list one multiplied by two one two three four five one two three four five it doesn't mean don't make mistake that one will be multiplied by two that's two then two by two four three by two six four by two eight no it will just repeat list number one list one will be repeated how many times two times if i put three it will be repeated three times okay if i remove from here and say list two times three also yes so you have it here because so long but it's the same it's the same okay if i make two also here yeah six seven eight nine ten six seven eight nine ten and list three let's say by two and it's so long so it will put it this way if i remove the two from here now it's in one line it's the same string one four point six string one four point six so you can also do these things what else okay what if i do this plus two can you uh, can you guess what will be the output can you guess what will be the output okay did you guess that there will be an error because two is integer you remember in the in the strings when we tried to add a string to an integer it didn't work there was an error the same with the list you cannot add you cannot add a list to an integer correct we can add the list to a list but list to integer it doesn't work what about list to string let's try again the same not string here you can only concatenate lists to a list not to a string so this need to be a list can i do it this way for example two let's see and now it's okay so we have list one one two three four five then two then six seven eight nine ten list two then list three string one four point six i'm trying to show you as many examples as possible the best way to learn is to do these things to try can i do this one what if i change what there will be there an error or it will work and you learn from the errors you learn from the errors what does it mean if i add two here and run the code now there is an error what is the error you read especially the last line can only concatenate list to list list to a list not integer you put an integer you cannot do that okay perfect let me remove these things and now what another type of error if i have list one list list two you forget the plus sign invalid syntax because list one list two they are defined but what are you trying to do there is nothing between them so this is the right way okay perfect this is done the lists are mutable what does it mean now if i have list one let me print it let me type it on the screen one two three four five now if i say list one item number one and let's say item number one which is index zero i want it i want to change it not one i want it to be for example 10 will it work let's see yes there is no error if i call list underscore one and now i call list one ten very good i changed the item one to ten from one to ten perfect so you can change you can change for example it works let's say this is my list equals and let's put names for example sam mark then 
Roy. Let's say these are students. Then I want to say, okay, Sam is no longer with us. I want to send. Uh, I want to change Sam. So I will say my list. Okay, and then item number zero, index zero, equals now. Let's say John. Okay, John. And there is an error if I click enter here because it need to make a string. And double quotation here, and now should be okay. Now if I recall, if I call my list. John Mark Roy so you can change because lists are mutable lists are mutable perfect this is done then append method there are many methods in the list so I can say for example imagine that I have my list so my list let's print it John Mark Roy John Mark Roy right now if I say my list and dot and of course just right let's type the name correct my list dot and now here my list dot now there will be different options methods will appear huh? there are many let's try append for example append and remember from the previous videos you need always brackets and if i append append does what it adds it adds some items to the list now let's see before i continue let me see if i run the code append takes exactly one argument you give nothing so you want to append you are telling python add or append to my list some items python saying where are the items you added nothing here i can say for example muson and if i click enter now run the code okay no errors perfect let me call my list now my list and now see John Mark Roy Muzon perfect so it's added it is added this is very important okay we'd like to try more I can say my list then dot then wait a second for the list to appear then you have different options you can reverse you can sort let's try reverse and don't forget the brackets I will not go over all of them I would like you to practice you you can play around them there is no way any lesson any course that covers everything in python or in any other subject so the best way is to practice to see what options are there the best way also is to implement and do projects which we are going to do together inshallah in later in later lessons so my list dot reverse there is no error and if i call my list now it's the opposite it's reversed now it was john mark roy muzon now it's muzon roy mark john okay so what i told python is take my list and reverse it okay take my list and reverse it i didn't have to add anything in between because it's enough take my list and reverse it that's it while in the previous one my list take my list and add to it python will ask add what okay so that's why we need to put something in between perfect let me stop this video here practice do some exercises open your python and i will see you in the next video welcome everyone in this lesson we are going to learn about the sets in python sets in python so in python a set is an unordered collection of unique elements we are going to see what does it mean and important about this it doesn't allow duplicate values doesn't allow duplicate values we'll see examples the order in which the elements are added to the set is not preserved let's see some examples and we start with how to create a set so let's define a list first let me call it my list my list equals square brackets one two three four five for example then out of this list I will create my set how do you create it by using the set function there is a function in Python called set so let me define my set my set equals I will use the set function and what do I need to include in the set function I will include my list my list let's see now if I run the code everything is okay no, no errors now if I call my set it will give me 
one, two, three, four, five. The same elements of the list, but with curly braces to indicate that this is a set. If you want to make sure the type, type of my set, run the code, and it is a set. It is a set. Perfect. This is one way to include your elements, your list, to include a list inside the set function. Another way or by enclosing a list of values in a curly braces. How to do that? So let's say sample set equals, and here I will put curly braces, then I will say 1, 10, 100, 1000. And if I run the code, all good. I call my sample set and it gives me 1, 10, 100, and 1000. So either you enter the elements inside a curly braces or you create a list and out of your list you just put the set function. Use the set function. Now let's see another example. If I see here type sample set and it is a set. Okay. Also I can say length of sample set and you remember what does it do the length function gives me the length correct of the set one two three four i have four elements four elements perfect you can add elements to a set using the add dot the add method how do you use that let me take sample set if i call it one ten hundred and one thousand and if i want to add i will just simply add brackets and what do you want to add i want to add let's say 500 enter run the code everything is okay and now i have 500 already in my i have 500 already added so i'll make this as a comment and now i will call my sample set and let's see the result is 1 10 100 500 and 1000 okay i have five elements now if I want to add more, you can add the same way, the add method. If you want to remove, you can also remove. I can say sample underscore set. This is my set. And let me just first call it to see the elements. One, ten, hundred, five hundred thousand. And then dot remove, the remove function. What do you want to remove? I want to remove the one thousand. Run. It has been removed. Now I will make it as a comment and recall my set sample set 1 10 hundred and 500 if you are wondering why I make it a comment because if I don't it will let's see run the code and there is an error because it has been removed already so if you run the code again it will give you an error so let me just put it as a comment and run the code again everything is okay now if I say here give me my set one thing I would like to show you my set my set is one two three four five now if I say okay my set I want to add my set dot add I would like to add five again I would add five again okay then I will call my set to see the result and see what will happen on the code my set sorry I made a mistake here I made it capital it should be exactly the same as the name so my set one two three four five it did already my set has one two three four five my set already has one two three four five right my set one two three four five so when I add five again it didn't add it why because as we said initially here will not have any duplicate values will not have any duplicate values. Let me make it more clear. Let's say set A, this is an, a set, equals, let's say, curly braces, one, 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 sorry, one, 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 five, 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 ten, ten, ten. Now, if I call set A, see what happens? It returns only the unique values. It doesn't allow duplication. It doesn't allow duplication. Why is that? 
it's important so what's the difference between a set and list it's just the curly braces and the set doesn't allow duplication it's important in the future when you have a more advanced or complex project that you want some data to be fixed and don't allow the users to change it so this is a good way to use it okay let's stop here for the sets and i will see you in the next video with some exercises and other topics thank you and see you soon hello everyone in this video we are going to learn about booleans in python a boolean is a data type that represents one of two values either true or false true or false so we use booleans to check if a condition is met or no let's start introducing this by saying by seeing the reserved words in python for the booleans which is true and make sure that t is capital and you see the color is different because if you put true with a small and you run the code there will be an error it will say true is not defined either you define it as a variable or make sure to make the t capital then if you run this code it says yes true so this is a boolean how do you make sure or check the type of this true you right check with the function type and you see b double o l and this is boolean okay so we have true then we have false again capital letter and it is a false and here if I check type of false that's boolean okay so true or false these are booleans and now where do we use it for example I say one is larger than two now if I run this code and this sign means larger or bigger one bigger than two now we know this is not correct and if I run the code Python will return to us or the output will be false will be false right now if you check the type of this it will be boolean now similarly I can say two is larger than zero if I run this code it will be true it will be true so it's simple we are going to talk about it more when we come to use it when we need it in more complex codes and programs but for now it's important for you to know that a boolean has two values either true or false depending on the conditions you have and often we use it in conditions in conditional for in conditional programs or functions same like uh, if if something is larger than something then return a true otherwise false and so on okay that's it for the booleans we are going to talk about it more in next programs for now try to type couple of operations you can for example say one equals one and double equal means check is it equal yes true if i change it to five for example it says false okay try to play a little bit with some operators we are going to talk about operators later on but bigger larger than smaller than equals and so on and i will see you in the next video welcome everyone in this lecture we are going to have some questions to test our knowledge on objects and data structures in python so this will cover almost everything we have studied so far just to test our knowledge and if you have any difficulties any questions feel free to reconsult the videos or just leave a question in the chat so let me in this video go over the questions and in the next video i will go over the solutions first a question what is a list in python and this should be easy you check one of these options if you have any doubts go back to the video of list what is a dictionary in python the same way we have four options check them how do you add a key value pair to a dictionary x the name of the dictionary is x in python how do you add a key value pair you have four options what is a tuple in python you have four options again choose one of them and for all these questions the first four questions go back to the videos of that specific topic list dictionary and tuple to find the answers if you have any doubts the next question has several codes and the requested is the required is to find the output of these codes so the first one x equal 5 
y equal equals 3.14 if we want to add x to y what will be the output second one x equals 5 y equals a 3 what is the output of x over y x equal 5 y equals 3 what is the output of this operation and you remember this is the mod then the next one x equals 5 y equals a 3 x to the power y next one 5 plus 2 times 3 minus 2 what is the output and be careful you need to mind to be mindful of the order of the operators x equals hello y equals word what is the output for all these questions and the next questions please just make sure i forgot to tell you that try to do it manually to think about the output before you run the code right because it can be easy you just run the code and you find the output but the point is you try it yourself and then and then we can see you can check your answer by running the code next one is x equals hello y equals word x times a three what is the output x equals hello then x of two what is the output x equals hello x two to four the output then x plus y if x is 5 y equals hello and be mindful here in these questions we have a uh, in this question specifically we have a number plus string right number and string x equals 1 2 3 y equals x y of 1 the index 1 the answer should be y of 1 equals 4 so print x print x in this case this is a dictionary here x equals a and the value is 1 b and the value is 2 x of a will be should be easy x equals this is a set then uh, sorry this is a dictionary then x of c equals a 3 print x what will be the output and the next two questions straightforward how do you access the third element of a list in python and the last question how do you modify the second element of a tuple in python okay good luck take your time and when you finish come back to the next video for the solutions hello everyone okay let's go ahead and do the solutions for the test make sure before you watch this video to do it yourself please because very important to practice even if you find it easy just do it yourself try to type on your on your python environment and see the answers okay now what is a list in python we have four options an ordered collection of objects that can be of different types an unordered collection of objects that can only be of the same type a dictionary with integer keys and values of any type so c is wrong because this is a dictionary obviously a set of values of any type and this is wrong as you know it's a the correct answer is a an ordered collection of objects that can be of different types easy what is a dictionary in python and the answer is a collection of key value pairs right collection of key and value pairs question number three how do you add a key value pair to a dictionary x in python the name of the dictionary is x how do you add a key value pair we have the first one x equals x plus key value x of key equals value and this is the correct answer b right this is how we add a key value pair into a dictionary what is a tuple in python a collection of key value pairs no this is dictionary an ordered collection of objects that can be of different types an immutable sequence of objects that can be of different types a mutable sequence of objects that can be only of the same type and the answer is c right immutable sequence of objects that can be of different types it can be integer float string anything and it's immutable what does it mean to be immutable it means you cannot assign or reassign elements inside the tuple what is the output of the following codes x equals 5 y equals 3.14 this should be easy x plus y 8.14 we run the code and 81.4 so when you add integer to a float you will get a float 
x equals 5, y equals 3. If we do the division, it will be 1.6666, then till the end, 7. x equals 5, y equals 3. If we take the mod, so 5 divided by 3, there is only one 3 in the 5, right? And the remaining is 2, so the answer should be 2, because we are looking at the remainder. x equals 5, y equals 3 x to the power of y, so 5 to the power of 3, 5 times 5, 25, and 25 times 5 is 125. Next one, 5 plus 2 times 3 minus 2, so 5 plus 2 is 7 times 3, 21 minus 2 is 19. No, that's wrong. So, be careful. You need to start with the multiplication. The operator's order, 2 times 3, 6. 6 plus 5, 11, minus 2, and the answer should be 9. So the priority or the first multiplication and division, then sum and minus, or addition and subtraction. Then x equals hello, y equals word, print x plus y, and the answer, as you may guess, hello world. There is no space, right? There is no space between them. Hello world. And the W is small here, hello world. If you want to make space, you can just add here a space. Sorry. Hello world. Or alternatively, you can alternatively you can add it before the word world. So either is correct. Let me send it back to its origin. And that's it. Yep. Hello world. If I want hello times the three, what will be? It will be hello, hello, hello right perfect if you want a space again the same way you can just add space hello 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 next one x equals hello print x of 2 the second or the index the element what does it mean i want the element that has index 2 so h is 0 we start with 0 then 1 for e and 2 for l so it's supposed to be l perfect x equals hello i want the elements of from 2 to 4 so 0 1 2 so I have L 3 and 4 but in Python remember we don't include 4 so only 2 and 3 and that will be LL X equals 5 Y equals hello X plus Y I hope you got this right because there will be an error we cannot separate we cannot add or do operations between integer and a string and the error here unsupported operation integer plus string doesn't work so there will be an error x equals the list 1 2 3 y equals x so it's the same y of 1 0 1 so it was 2 now i reassigned it to 4 so the answer should be 1 4 3 correct x equals the dictionary a1 b2 x of a should be 1 straightforward this is the key a and the value is 1 x a1 b2 a dictionary now i added this is how we add a key value pair x c equals 3 so it should be now a1 b2 c3 a dictionary with additional element c3 perfect how do you access a third element of a list x in python x2 0 1 2 mm -hmm. x3 x minus 3 x 0 2 what do you think should be x2 right the because the third element has index 2 I start with 0 for first element 1 for second element and 3 2 for the third element 0 1 2 how do you modify the second element of a tuple X in Python how do you modify second element of a tuple in Python X of 1 yes this is the second element equals 4 can we do this no because tuples are immutable so it's not possible to modify them not possible to modify them perfect if you get the answers most of them correct that's perfect if you had any mistakes any errors please go back to the videos the specific video for that error and let's try to study it again if you still have any challenges feel free to write in the Q&A I will be more than happy to help you with any questions thank you very much keep going and I will see you in the next lecture Hello everyone, in this video we are just going to summarize before we end this section I would like to summarize the data structures and the objects types that we have studied so far 
So we have at the beginning integer object, which is a whole number with no decimal points, no decimal points in between, no decimal point in between, similar as the example x equals 10. Float object, a number with a decimal point, y equals 10.5, we have decimal point. String object, a sequence of characters enclosed in, quote, in quotes, like z equals hello, and you see the double quotation or single quotation. Boolean Boolean object, a value that can be either true or false. A equals true, B equals false. These are booleans. List object, an ordered collection of objects that can be of any data type and can be modified. List one equals, and you can see it's a square brackets. One, two, three, four, separated by a comma. Tuple object, an ordered collection of objects that can be of any type and cannot be modified. This is the most important. Cannot be modified. Tuple 1 equals 5, 6, 7, 8 and you can see it's a parenthesis. Set object, an unordered collection of unique objects that cannot be modified. Set 1 equals 9, 10, 11, 12 and you have the curly braces around. Dictionary object, a collection of key value pairs where the keys must be unique at and the values can be of any data type. Dictionary 1 equals key 1, key 2, key 3, key 4, and the values 13, 14, 15, 16. Between the key and the value, there is a column, and it, everything is enclosed in curly braces. So this is a quick summary. I hope it's clear. Thank you very much for joining for the first section, and now we are going to move to section number two and learn more about Python. Thank you very much, and see you soon.